，线上嘅观众，大家早晨。欢迎大家嚟到由香港设计师协会 HKDA 主办嘅环球设计大奖 Global Design Awards 2021， 简称 GDA 嘅线上评审分享会。我系今日嘅大会师 v i n c e 咁多位大家早晨。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the judges seminar of the Hong Kong Designers Association HKDA Global Design Awards 2021. m y name is v i n c e the MC for today. 今次我哋嘅评审分享会啦，除咗获得香港特别行政区政府创意香港赞助之外啦，亦都有赖全球各大机构、业界精英嘅鼎力支持。不如喺呢个时候咧，我哋首先邀请香港设计师协会 HKDA 环球设计大奖 GDA 二零二一嘅项目策展人江培强博士为我哋致欢迎词。Now it gives me great pleasure and honor to invite Dr. Anthony Kong, Project Coordinator of HKDA 2021, to deliver the welcome speech for us. Anthony, please. 唔该晒啊 ，Vinci。诶，大家好啊，诶，欢迎嚟自世界各地嘅评审啦，诶，设计业嘅人士同埋广大嘅香港市民参加我哋诶今日嘅线上分享会。咁啊，喺分享會開始之前咧，咁啊，我想啊，先代表啊 HKDA 香港設計師協會啦，同埋啊 GDA 誒環球設計大獎嘅全體成員，向啊中島英樹老師嘅家人同埋親友誒致先致意深切嘅慰問，亦都好多謝啊中島老師嘅團隊。同意我哋喺分享會上邊繼續播放中島英樹老師生前佢準備咗俾我哋嘅簡報啦。咁等一陣咧，我哋可以透過誒佢嘅作品啦，一齊誒再一次懷念中島英樹老師對設計業界嘅重大貢獻嘅。我哋一眾嘅成員亦都啊非常多謝今次能夠啊抽空啦抽時間出席嘅評審啦。咁啊包括。平面設計類別嘅啊，陳超雲先生 Eric 啦，數碼設計類別嘅啊 ，Mr. Osaka Dana Hara Gorman， 產品設計類別嘅啊，梁坤光先生 Avoy 啦，同埋啊，忽來康宏先生啦，仲有啊 ，Mr. Rogers Ra， 空間空間設計類別嘅誒 ，Mr. Colin Siha。最後仲有啊，最佳設計啊，客户、最佳用戶體驗、最具影響力，同埋啊，瑞新創意類別嘅啊，顏耀輝先生啊 ，Fred。咁啊 ，GDA 啊，今年咧已經嚟到啊第四十六個年頭噶啦，誒，正式邁向啊四十七年啦。咁作為今年啊 GDA 啊二零二一嘅策展人，咁我想大同大家分享啦。今年我哋收到啊超過十五個國家誒、啊、有啊二千二百件都幾高水準嘅作品啦。誒、啊、亦都經過二十四位啊世界啊知名嘅設計師誒、啊、線上線下誒、啊、去評選之後咧。咁從五十個啊設計類別裏邊，我哋最終就啊選出咗啊四百七十八個獎項啦。咁當中包括啊金獎啦、銀獎啦、銅獎啦、誒優異獎啦，同埋啊評審之選啦，我哋叫做啊 Hong Kong Best 啦。誒同時間咧，亦都啊多謝啊創意香港嘅贊助啦，令到我哋啊 GDA 啦立下啊一個新嘅里程碑。最後啊～再一次啊，多謝啊，感謝各位啊，評審同埋嘉賓今日出席我哋嘅啊 GDA 二零二一嘅線上評審分享會。誒，亦都啊，多謝啊各位嘅啊贊助嘅單位啦、支持嘅機構啦，同埋大家合作嘅夥伴啦，對 GDA 一路以來嘅啊支持同埋貢獻啦，令我哋啊 GDA 可以喺啊全球啊疫情咁。嚴峻嘅情況底下咧，都仍然可以繼續誒進行啦。再一次多謝各位。Thank you， 唔該曬 Anthony 嘅歡迎辭嘅。嗱，咁今日咧，我哋都好高興邀請到七位國際評審同我哋分享一下佢哋嘅設計理念同埋心得噶。咁當中包括有平面設計類別陳超宏先生，數碼設計類別。Mr. Oscar Delahera Gomez, 
、產品設計類別，梁坤光先生、郭內康廣先生、Mr. Rogers Wells。空间设计空空间设计类别 ，Mr. Colin Zia， 最佳设计客户奖、最佳用户体验奖、最具影响力奖以及最新创意奖类别，颜耀辉先生。咁喺我哋每一个评审分享之后啦，其实都有一个 Q&A 嘅问答环节嘅，大家可以好简单喺 Zoom 页面下方嘅位置咧。咁 Q&A 嗰個掣寫低你哋嘅問題，咁當然啦。同時我哋剛才好似 Anthony 提及啦，我哋都好多謝中道先生嘅團隊同我哋分享咗中道老師生前為我哋準備嘅簡報，一陣間將會由翻譯員為大家聲音去導航噶。Now today I would like to move on to the official introduction of our international panel of judges. We are honoured to have seven judges with us this morning. They are Mr. Eric Chen of Graphic Category, Mr. Oscar De La Hera Gomez of Digital Category, Mr. Ron Lang, Yasuhiro Horui Chisang, and Mr. Rogers Wells of Product Category, Mr. Colin Sia of Spatial Category, and Mr. Fred Nian of the New Categories, Design Clientele Award, Experience Award, Impact Award, and Rising Creative. There will be a Q&A section after each judge sharings. So if you have any questions for our judges, do remember to press the Q&A set button at the bottom of the Zoom screen and please leave your question in the Q&A box. In memory of Hideki Nakajima-san, we will also include the sharing materials prepared by Mr. Nakajima for us during his lifetime, and it will be guided by an interpreter with a voiceover. 好啦，事不宜遲啦，我哋不如咧即將開始我哋今日第一個分享。咁當然啦，我梗係要為大家介紹一下我哋第一位同大家分享嘅國際評審陳超宏先生 Eric。Eric 係香港多元化嘅資深平面設計師，咁至今啦已經獲得多達四百項香港以及國際嘅榮譽同埋各項嘅大獎，咁當中包括英國 DNAD 黃元筆提名。美國 One Show Design Award 金獎、日本字體設計協會年獎 Best of the Best、香港設計師協會雙年展金獎以及國際海報三年展金獎等等嘅。咁 Eric 嘅設計啦，同埋創作事業已經係超過四十年，足跡亦都遍及平面設計。企業形象以及品牌設計等等嘅顧問服務，同時佢亦都創立咗 Air Chan Design Company Limited， 至今咧亦都已經創立超過三十年啦。Now I'm happy to introduce the first speaker of today, Mr. Eric Chan, our judge from the graphic category. Eric is a senior graphics designer in Hong Kong with over 40 years of experience. He set up his own design consultancy. Eric Chen Design Company Limited since 1991 and has been awarded with more than 400 international and Hong Kong awards, including British D and 80 Yellow Pencil nomination, US One Show Design Gold Award, Japan Applied Typography Awards Best of the Best, HKD Awards Gold Award, and International Poster Triennial Toyoma and International Triennial Gold Award. And without further ado, I'd like to pass the time to our first speaker, Eric. And the topic that he's going to share with us is Streets of Hong Kong. 事不宜遲啦，將個時間交俾 Eric。Hello， 咁多位好。咁呢個係咪 ？Sorry， 係。我講得噶啦，係嘛 ？Hello， 咦，我係咪講得？誒、呃、各位早晨啊！其實誒、呃、有樣嘢想都講聲先嘅，咁啊 G D A D 一個 seminar 係一再一一再誒、呃、延期到去今日啦。其實咧誒、呃、經歷過咁多嘢咧，我諗 G D A team 咧都做得好辛苦。咁誒點都好，希望 G D A 嘅誒誒啲 leader 又好啦，啲 staff 又好啦。全部咧都對自己講聲多謝、啊、我亦都多謝誒 G D A 誒做到而家呢個時候嘅嘅嘅辛苦工作啦。啊，咁啊，今日咧我講嘅 topic 咧就有部分其實係講呢個香港街道。咁啊喺啲喺啲兩三誒啲、呃、三四年之間咧，其實就
做咗一啲同、呃、香港街道有關嘅 project 啦。咁、呃、第一個 project 就係嗰個嘉行街。嘉行街呢個 project 咧就係、是、香港呢個市建局啦。咁、呃、其實係二零一八年嘅 project 嚟嘅。咁佢演威咗香港六個 artist 啦，我係其中一個啦。咁啊，做一啲 promotion 係關於家行嘅。咁佢哋嘅對象咧係一啲、呃、年青一輩啊、後生仔咁咯。咁我就心我我就用咗、呃、以前嘅五十年代、六十年代嘅一啲馬者嘅嘅嘅 image 咧，嚟去帶出誒嘉、呃、街市嘅一啲誒、呃、當時嘅生活誒嘅、呃、模式啊。會係點樣樣咁樣？咁馬者嘅興誒嘅嘅嘅誒出現咧，就係、是、以前咧一班誒、呃、女性咧，佢哋係覺得嗯需要靠男人嘅。咁佢哋咧大部分咧都係話係靠自己，係<咳>自自誒、呃、自己養自己養活自己嘅。咁誒。呃佢哋另外有一個好好誒特色咧，就係佢哋個個個頭後邊咧係扎咗個個好好長嘅嘅邊嘅啊，或者係一個係翹起嘅一個計咁咯。咁當時就其實係一啲好富庶嘅或者係有錢嘅人家咧，先至會係請得起誒一啲馬者咯。其實係係啲工，其實其實係工人嚟嘅，不過係佢哋係。誒、呃、零零舍舍咧，好似好有 uniform 咁樣，一係白色啊，一係黑色啊，一係灰色咁樣嘅衫。咁我咧就誒、呃，我讀間學校咧，小學嗰陣時咧就有幾個同學仔咧，其實都係喺誒近呢個誒嘉行街上邊咧喺度住嘅。咁佢哋當然啦，都係富貴人家啦。咁其實呢張相唔係嘅，呢張相唔係佢哋嚟嘅，係喎、哦。係我網上去去 search 翻翻嚟嘅，不過咧，佢哋咧你見到啦，佢哋啲誒細路仔其實又有裙著啊，又有誒、呃、打煲胎咁樣，其實咧係係差唔多係香港當時咧最 top 嘅嗰一班嘅嘅誒嘅誒階層嘅人啊，先至可以咁樣樣嘅，啲都係啦。咁我用咗馬者誒佢、呃、背住面嘅一個 visual 啦，因為咧想強調佢嗰個係誒嗰個誒、呃、馬鞭。咁啊，同、呃、埋我因為誒六十年代咧，我係成日同我阿嫲咧一齊去街市嘅，所以咧成日見到誒、呃、當時嘅情形咧，其實同而家呢啲係一模一樣嘅。譬如誒買嗰啲餸啦，就會用啲草繩啊。而家我諗係少咗好多嘅。嚟去誒點、呃、樣扎住一啲嘅冬瓜啦？誒、呃，另外咧就亦都有啲係譬如啲魚啦、蔬菜類啊咁樣，都係咁樣樣去去去去去揸住去買餸嘅。咁右邊一個咧，其實咧我係想做出呢個係比較誒、呃、得意啲嘅效果啦，所以咧會有一個誒、呃、矮矮肥肥嘅一個一個女性嘅造型咯。咁後邊嗰、那個嗰、那個攞咧，嗰、那個勒啊，佢栽住呢啲呢啲誒，譬如西瓜啊、生果嘢咧，其實當時咧就真係我係見過係有嘅，即係我我我自己經歷過見過嘅嘢，所以我係做埋落去啦。咁啊，亦都有啲係誒叫菜誒嗰啲藤籃咯。其實呢個藤籃嘅比例已經係細嘅，因為當時其實好大嘅，因為佢哋要買好多人嘅餸啊。就誒翻、呃、去煮係佢哋誒咩都係佢哋噶，咁啊右邊咧亦都如果有啲人我諗都見過啦，就係佢哋嗰啲誒買早餐嗰啲嗰啲嗰啲瓦餐嗰啲糊啊，咁啊而家咧我都見過有人去再 reproduction 個個外貌啦，但係就始終同舊嘅係好唔同咯，以前係。嗱，譬如咧，另外右邊咧就、呃、以前係真真係買嘅生雞咧，有啲係自己咁樣湯。不過
，我所見我嗰陣時嗰啲咧，就係喺嗰個雞檔嗰度咧，就、呃、一刀咁啊，劏落個頸度咧，就擺落一個一個桶啦，等佢、呃、放血，然之後咧，先至係再掹毛啊，殺殺誒殺熟啲毛之後掹啦，跟住就一。就是、光秃秃嘅雞死咗嘅，咁啊先至會俾你。咁另外有啲係、呃、用用啲草先去扎住個菜啦，就亦都有啲咁嘅呢嚟買一隻生雞會係咁樣樣做法啦。咁我做出呢一扎嘅誒呢一呢扎工人咧，其實想想多啲嘅唔同嘅類類型嘅嘅造型咯。咁啊～試見嗰個路咧，就想我哋咧就做一啲一扎嘅 item 嘅，呢個係其中一個係啲紙袋啦。咁誒，我係我係用翻以前我哋所謂嗰個年代叫雞袋咧嘅模式咧，或者嘅結構咧嚟去做呢一個嘅誒紙袋嘅。咁我做咗幾款嘅。咁另外咧，紙袋下面咧亦都有一個係當時嘅、呃、地圖啦。因為嗰陣時我我參照翻以前嘅地圖，嗰陣時係咁樣畫法嘅啊 ，exactly 咁樣擺翻落去啦。除咗紙袋之後咧，跟住亦都有做到啲 note pad 啦。其實誒呢度就唔係好多款係印到出嚟嘅到而家、啊、另外有啲、呃、包裝紙啦。咁誒，佢哋佢哋都問啦，點解我成日淨係做嗰、那個誒嗰、呃那個工人嘅背面咧，唔做前邊咧？咁樣咧有樣睇咧，咁我而家做埋俾佢睇啦。咁因為點解咧？因為當時咧係要做 mass 嘅 production 嘅。誒、呃、呢、這個 project 其實二零一八年傾傾到二零一九年，二零一九年年尾咧開始做。咁但係咧，就二零二零年年頭咧，就開始有疫情啦，所以點解會、呃、口罩亦都係一個 production 咯，要要要需要做嘅嘢咯。咁另外有一個咧，就佢哋好想做嘅係一個 signage， 一個地標咧喺佢哋街市嗰度隔離嘅。咁咧就、呃呃、我就做咗一個咁嘅 layout 俾佢哋去。睇啦，咁啊，其實係人人頭嗰、那個嗰一部分咧，就因為大多數嘅馬者咧，其實好精打細算嘅，所以我用咗一個係算盤啦嚟去做一個 special。咁亦都有路做咗兩張 poster 啦。誒、呃，我係將我係我係將嗰陣時嘅我所見到街市所出現或者係所所做嘅模式咧，我差唔多。我記得嘅，我啲我啲絕大部分絕大部分咧係擺咗落去噶啦。譬如嗰陣時有多個個 law 嘅，誒啲譬如係佢哋買一啲生果又好，蔬菜又好，誒佢哋都係用呢個咁嘅 law 咧嚟去擺喺度咧就可以開檔嘅。因為嗰陣時都香港嘅環境都誒唔係好好啦嚇，都樣嘢都好貧乏嘅，咁誒。亦都嗰陣時嘅雞雞籠咧，又有大有細嘅，呢只係屬於細嘅，其實係擺呢一個就兩兩隻雞嗰度嘅啫。亦都有一啲誒嗰啲紅 A 嘅所謂誒嗰啲照明燈啦。其實嗰啲燈咧係而家用 LED， 以前咧係用烏斯燈膽嘅。咁亦都有啲啲木誒、呃、木，所謂木車啦，就嗰裏邊咧就有啲係賣蔬菜啦，有啲賣。買買瓜類或者買一啲係誒誒雜貨嘅嘅嘅食品啦咁，咁亦都誒、呃、有嗰啲買米啦，買米嘅嘅嘅米鋪啦。不過以前買米咧，就我自己印象咧，我屋企咧就係 order 完咧就有人送上嚟嘅，就一大包咁樣嘅，用啲麻用啲麻。麻繩嘅布織成嘅好粗糙嘅一啲袋咯，咁啊
，第一個 project 就係加鹹街就係啦，呢度講完啦。咁啊，成個 experience 咧就俾我感覺咧就。因為個疫情問題咧，所以佢哋做個 promotion 其實都好少啊，就誒、呃、只係限於嗰條街裏邊嘅人咧，或者傑志街嘅人咧，先至比較即係清楚或者知道，即係呢個係一個少少覺得係少浪費，嘥咗啊！因為我哋有六個 artist， 咁另外咧就喺二零二零年啦，二零二零二零二零年頭啦。咁二月咧就誒，因為嗰陣時我其實收到都好多誒、呃、外國嘅一啲 professor 啦，或者 designer 咧嘅 invite 咧，就去佢俾一個 topic 我，我做一啲 visual 出嚟咧，係俾佢哋有啲係做 show 啦，或者係做佢哋嘅自己校內嘅 presentation 嘅。咁、这个、呢一個 topic 咧就是、at this moment， 咁誒喺當下嘅時候。你係做緊啲乜嘢，或者係發生緊啲乜嘢咧？咁咁其實我唔係我唔係特登係揾一條街嘅名嚟去做，而係嗰陣時係有感而發，見到件事係咁咯。咁誒嗰陣時係二零二零年嘅三月啦。咁我喺威靈頓街咧嗰、那個麥恩記咧食完面，食完面之後咧，我就一路行落去啦。成條街咧其實咧好短嘅啫。百銀記嗰條街十幾個鋪位到嘅，但係居然有差唔多十個鋪位咧，係咁樣樣。即係你,你,你一路行過一路經過咧，其實好心,心痛同埋心酸。點解會搞到咁咧？咁誒，我又我又揀咗呢幾張，因為呢幾張咧都係我嗰個時間影。咁其實。我差唔多都影咗好多張，影咗影咗十幾，即係十幾間鋪嘅嘅樣。不如誒，嗱、呃、呢、这個咧就係、是、呢呢、这個影影係跟後威靈頓街嘅另外一個鋪位。咁我見到呢啲鋪位咧，其實有樣嘢就係、是、我就心諗，點解會做到好？即係如果你喺條街度咁樣行咧，其實好好好唔舒服。咁我我我個 topic 咧就係、是、想話係，我仲有其他啲啦，係喺中環上邊另外一條街嘅，成條街都係咁樣樣。呢幾張咧，誒直情係上個禮拜影嗰啲，成條街都係咁。咁跟住咧，我就誒、呃、將誒頭先我影咗嗰幾個嘅誒嘅嘅鋪位啦，嘅店鋪啦。其實我喺度諗，其實佢哋每一個鋪咧都億億聲噶嘛。但係點解嗰個業主唔肯花一少少嘅錢，令到佢好睇啲咧？咁咁我咧就其實將呢幾張咧全部咧係誒再重新做過啦，等佢乾淨你落啲啦，冇咁冇唔好再邋遢咯。啊，咁跟住咧就。我就想心諗就係啲 sales 可唔可以將嗰啲佢哋嗰啲誒佢哋嗰啲所謂 promo 或者係揾佢哋嗰啲咁嘅招子咧？誒、呃，好似連到去一朵，好似一朵花咁，或者係甜靚啲咁啊？可唔可以咧？咁再再唔係嘅，如果你中意 Beatles 嘅，你擺 Beatles 嘅樣落去啦，得唔得咧？或者你中意嘅 artist 啦，咁樣樣好唔好？即、就、係、是、舒服啲咯，我覺得咁樣樣。呢、这個係我第二個 part， 就係關於啲街道。另外誒，二零二一年啦，另外一個誒、呃、一個 progressor 嘅，其實佢。professor 佢佢都唔係 professor 嚟嘅，佢係 designer 嚟嘅
誒佢俾咗一個即係認為我去去參加佢呢一個嘅叫 contact 嘅一個誒、呃、網上海報展啦。咁我就我又諗就我用咗兩個嘅方法嚟去做啦。一就係、是、我用街嘅街道嘅牌啊嘅嘅，因為佢好簡單啊，我覺得。第二，我用咗個一啲膠帶啦，去 block 住每一個地方啦。你你我諗呢幾年成日都見到呢啲嘅，呢幾年係香港成日都見到嘅一啲膠帶，但係主要係藍白色啦，因為即係警方用啦，所以我唔方便喺呢歐度咧咁樣用法啦。譬如兩一個街道，兩兩個街牌咁樣去做一個 visual， 做一啲 block 咗去，咁其實咧好似 block 咗一條街咁。如果係將佢咁樣做咧，就係、是、block 咗一個區喎。其實我其實其實我我我我當時做我冇諗住係而家啲嘅時候二零二零會發生喺呢度咯，但係都都其實都咩咩都會發生嘅呢、這個世界。咁我係做咗一啲 visual 咧，就俾誒嘅大阪嗰邊咧做一啲 exhibition 咯。跟住另外一個 version 咧，我用個用漢用漢字嘅方法啦。誒、呃，我用個接觸個觸字，因為個 contact 嘛。咁我做咗啲啲 exercise 俾自己嘅。咁我覺得都唔知點解就呢個仲未 OK 嘅，因為好似個字好 strong 咁樣樣。咁我用 digital 嘅效果一格格一格格咧，因為嗰陣時咧啲人係除咗用 digital 喺網上大家溝通咧，好似咧。都冇辦法係，即少咗好多好多嘅大家嘅接觸。咁我用咗最尾決定用咗呢一個字係幼身咧，其實我想我我想帶出係嗰種誒、呃、無力感。誒、呃，其實呢啲嘢都唔係我哋可以誒點、呃、樣掌握得到嘅，即係呢件事係咁，你就要去接受與否㗎啦。咁我就做咗一個中文，即、就、係、是、漢字嘅 version， 同埋一個英文嘅 version。誒、呃，另外一個啦，另外一個係我係二零二零零七年做嘅，亦都係我我唔記得係咪香港呢、這個誒、呃、香港重建誒局、呃、去邀請嘅，我唔記得咗啦。不過都係政府機構。咁啊！佢嗰陣時咧就邀請咗十個 artist 啦，每一個 artist 咧去做一個 item 嚟去 promote 呢個歌賦街。其實歌賦街同頭先嗰個誒街唔街又好近。呢兩條街咧都係我成日細個咧會成日都去嘅，因為我有同學仔喺度附近住啊。咁我成日都會落去啦。咁所以嘉鹹街嘅街市咧，我係有印象嘅。因為嘉鹹街同埋傑子街咧，咁其實佢係啲街市咯。咁歌賦街咧，其實誒、呃、有有有好多誒嗰嗰陣時有啲印刷印刷誒嘅、呃、公司仔喺度嘅，印啲 stationery 啊，印啲誒好細嘅小文件仔嘅一啲印刷咯。咁啊、呃，我當時做嗰啲兩張嘅海報啦，歌賦。咁誒，呢、呃、條街咧好窄嘅，所以咧我初頭諗嘅時候咧，就左右咧其實試過咧想攬一條繩咧，然之後將啲布咧就就掛上去咧嚟去做呢一個歌賦嘅字，但係原來咧冇可能嘅，因為咧呢、这個地即係嗰個空間太大咧，其實咧啲風係吹唔到嘅，其實其實嘅好好好大風，好大風咧，先至可以吹到啲字咧，嗰啲布咧係會咁樣出現，其實冇可能嘅。咁我所以咧就誒同傅卓講咧，就用呢個 computer retouch 啦嚟去做啦。咁啊誒係影咗好多好多呢啲咁嘅布啦，去再 retouch 喺裏邊啦。咁而我用呢個方法咧，係因為就。細細個嗰時候，我印象咧就係、是、其實嗰陣時嘅誒
嘅街咧，好多大廈咧，或者住宅咧，都係咧咁樣將啲衫係掛出嚟。我係想將呢一個咁嘅誒嘅視覺嘅感覺咧，用翻喺呢個歌賦呢張 poster 裏邊。咁啊，嗱，街道嗰啲啊講完啦，咁跟住另外有一啲咧，就係我記得好似唔知二零一七定二零一幾年嘅，其實都係 by invitation 係喺歐洲一個 organ organ 嘅 donation 啦，係器官捐贈嘅。咁我當時咧做咗幾張嘅，其中一其中一啲嘅方，我主要用嘅方法咧就係、是。誒、啊、想用水墨嘅所謂叫託印，我印咗好多好多個啦，即係譬如心臟啊，譬如一啲腎啦嘅器官啦，或者係一啲肺啦，咁啊，我印咗好多張，印咗筆下，每一款都有起碼二二三十張去揀，揀完之後咧，我係做咗呢啲咁嘅海報出嚟咯。咁啊，將佢黑色嘅水墨啦，好似好死壞死咗咁嘅器官，一刀係咪可以令佢用用用呢個熒光色去印印誒，好似係重現一個生命咧咁。咁啊，呢幾張都係用咁嘅 concept 咯。咁後尾咧，我就試咗打鼓落一啲 metallic 嘅紙度啦。原來黑色咧唔唔夠力啊！我覺得誒，同埋佢太累啊個黑色嗰度，因為太個色黑黑色誒、呃、太死啊！反而我就用白色咧，佢嗰個好冷嗰感覺咧更加強，而嗰個熒光咧更加跳出嚟，所以我用咗呢個方法做咗幾張 poster。咁啊，因為佢哋需要打稿，佢哋需要打稿，然之後寄過嚟俾佢哋，佢哋係。實體嘅海報展，咁另外亦都有一張啦，係可以係一個 summary 啦，咁啊將幾個嘅一個嘅嘅器官 group 埋喺一張度啦。咁誒呢一張其實係印咗八個穿色嘅，有三個係熒光色。其實有好多地方咧係做完又做，做完又做，試完又試咁樣咯。跟住喺誒啱啱啱啱完嘅啫，喺日本大阪咧就有個 association invite 啦，叫 Type Fest 啦。咁佢嘅 topic 咧叫旅旅行嘅旅。咁我就心諗旅行其實係即係講你嗰個見聞又好，講你嘅足跡又好啦。咁我用咗呢一張呢、这個做法啦嚟去做啦。咁啊用一個腳印啦，咁同埋用啲紙咧，用不規則咁樣咧。個感覺上好似你一個腳紋咁樣嘅嘅嘅腳印咧踩落去咯，咁同埋裏邊嘅字咧就係講啊，我係去旅行去得最多地方，我諗喺日本，同埋我好中意呢個地方啦。誒、啊，其實唔係食住嘅嘅嗰種嘅嘅享受啦，而係誒喺嗰度學到好多嘢啦。我係一九八一年第一次去東京。咁啊，亦都誒買到好多嘢，見到好多好好嘅嘅 design 啦，譬如鐵砖光啊啲啦。咁啊，喺唔同嘅年份啦，一九一九八五啊，或者係一二零一七咧，亦都去睇啊永井一正嘅 show 啊。呢啲係一裏邊個 copy， 大約係講我係喺誒呢個東京同埋去日本嗰陣時嘅見聞啦，就。而誒令到我嘅 design 會即係更加誒、呃、增長我好多好多好多 design 上嘅誒見識啦，同埋知識啦。咁啊，最後啦，講今次咧，其實誒、呃、中島英樹咧誒、呃，其實以以前 GDA 咧，佢唔係叫 GDA 嘅，佢叫做 Hong Kong D A Award。咁嗰幾誒好似係零二年嗰陣時咧開始啦，誒、呃、已經現威過中島咧都有起碼兩次嘅
。咁後屘再轉做誒呢、呃這個、呃、GDA award 咧，亦都我印象好似係都演威過嘅，但係因為佢嘅健康問題咧，佢都係婉拒咗嘅。咁但係就好得意嘅，呃我同佢唔係話熟得好交關好交關，但係我係喺我記得好似印象係零一六年咧，大家第一次見咗之後咧，其實跟住咧，我每一次去東京咧，即係好多時都會有去拜訪佢，去佢 studio。佢係一個好慷慨嘅，佢、呃、譬如佢有啲 portfolio 嘅書咧，其實佢第一次俾咗我，有簽名有埋日期。佢跟住、呃、有一年咧，又係又再俾我，咁我已經話俾佢聽話你俾過我噶啦，多謝啦，好，即係你你俾第二個啦。咁佢又話、呃、我簽咗名啦，佢日期都有啦，同你之前嗰本係唔同噶，咁你咪 keep 多本咯，咁類似咁樣樣，同埋佢每一次都好送送,、呃、送一啲好好靚嘅書俾我，同埋一啲海報嘅，其中有一張咧係係一個玫瑰誒、呃、融化咗咯，咁嗰一張。咁啊，其實佢嗰次係送咗俾我之後咧，佢話我冇噶，我冇 keep 噶啦。最後一張係你 keep 噶啦咁樣。咁其實我俾翻佢嘅相，即係我真係俾翻佢，因為我冇理由攞人哋最後嗰一張自己冇 keep 嘅海報咯。咁但係點都要點都話俾我，即係好好多謝佢，都感激佢。咁啊，今次嘅 show 咧就做 judge 咧，其實就係誒係個幫手去演威佢。咁佢亦都誒、呃，其實都幾夜嘅嗰陣時，我係我係同阿阿 Masa 阿古平正義就講聲，我問佢可唔可以同阿中島英樹講聲，就一齊嚟去 GDA 嗰度做 judge 啊咁樣。咁佢咧就其實嗰晚已經即刻復係應承，咁我喺呢度再即係即係其實唔其實非常唔開心嘅，因為我實在係好欣賞好欣賞呢一個設計師，誒同埋喺呢個時候發生一件咁嘅事咯，誒、呃、希望安息啦，同埋就亦都希望佢嘅家人啦，同埋佢太太啦。誒、呃，盡快喺呢個悲傷中行翻出嚟嚇。誒、啊，係、呃、咯，我我講嘢唔多，咁啊，多謝 G D A， thank you， 唔多位。唔該曬，多謝曬 Eric 嘅分享 ，thank you so much Eric for your insightful、uh, presentation with us。And now we'll move on to the Q and A section。咁啊，呢個時候其實咧，當 Eric 你 present 緊嘅時候啦，誒、呃，其實我哋都線上面啦，都有啲觀眾啊，都有問題想請教你噶。咁咧，第一題咧就應該係講緊你假鹹解屎啦，馬姐嗰個設計，佢就話啊，點解唔用手繪出嚟，效果會唔會可能更好咧？手繪啊，咦，你講得好啊，不過係手繪。嗱，手繪即係 illustration 咧，你睇下係去到咩嘅咩嘅情況咯。因為佢一到一一講嘅時候咧，已經話到明係誒，而、呃、佢對象係啲誒，即係年青一輩，所以我每一樣嘢咧都要係好咁 serious 咯，即係有少少。有少少玩玩地嘅效果，咁同埋我覺得 graphics 就好似係佢哋易領略一啲啩，因為你手繪咧有好多嘢咧，誒、呃、嗱最主要咧一樣嘢啦，誒佢哋唔係好多 budget 嘅啫，咁啊你要佢哋再俾一啲 budget 去 illustration 咧，其實我諗佢殺咗你嚇，係啊，係，明白。
即係可以咁講，一個設計其實好多時候都有好多唔同嘅考慮因素。當然靈感啊、創作啊都係即係都係其中之一樣嘅。咁但係，剛才 Eric 提及嘅，都我相信啊，都可能解答咗其中之一位觀眾嘅問題啦。我哋仲有多位誒、呃、線上嘅朋友咧有問題，我估咧佢應該係講緊關國關於你分享歌富街。歌 street 咧嗰個時候，佢想問就話啊，其實你你點樣去 design on 嗰個 graphic style 啊、uh, ，on 嗰啲 flat illustrations 咧？誒、呃、嗱，嗰陣時咧就二零零七年啦，我都我都算係後生嘅。咁誒、呃，我去到嘅嗰條街同埋 full talk 嘅時候咧，誒、呃、傾點樣去做呢一個嘅 visual 咧？其實去到咧已經，即係我我嗰陣時嘅狀態，個人嘅狀態咧就每做一樣嘢，譬如去到嗰度咧，我已經知道自己想點。誒、呃，我話曬俾嗰個副倉聽點樣樣點樣去去去做咁樣，已經已經喺個腦嗰度係入曬係會用緊嘅方法，同埋我又將以前細個一啲嘅感覺咧，我講俾佢聽。咁所以就、呃、做咗，即係我都好難講俾你聽係點解會係有一件咁嘢出嚟咯。而我唔用第啲方法咧，咁誒好難解釋，因為人嘅 design work 咧、呃，你去到點樣樣，其實已經係係係唔係？唔係我，係嗰陣時已經係係已經係喺腦海裏邊咧係做咗出嚟。其實我另外有一樣嘢咧，我想補充嘅，我先冇講到。咁啊，中島英樹先生啦，咁我其實就有有一個 visual 咧係做咗出嚟。其實最近呢兩個禮拜做嘅啫。誒。我係 from 嗰一幅相咧，我 from 嗰一幅相去做，去做呢個泰坡嘅。咁而誒，佢啲佢嗰啲佢啲字嘅組成咧，就係、是、佢有個 fonts， 有個 fonts 叫 Nakajima fonts 咧，係專係做嗰陣時佢 cut magazine 做嘅。咁我就仲用咗呢個 fonts 嚟去堆砌，去其實做咗好。都兩個幾禮拜啊！即係我係想，我係向佢真係致敬啊！其實佢同我差唔多年紀，但係我覺得佢真係喺我嚟講係一個天才。咁啊，呢一張啦，同埋就另外一張就係再 close up 啲啦。我覺得 Impact 好似強啲，慢慢都係用一啲字砌成出嚟。咁我係 from 佢呢一幅相咧，而好耐之前噶啦，因為佢有啲送俾我嘅書咧，係用係有呢用呢幅相，我覺得佢嗰陣時好有型，因為嗰陣時仲 cut magazine 啦，做啊 Sakimoto 嗰啲 CD 啦，每一樣嘢都係令到係世界矚目嘅嘢，佢佢做每一樣嘢都覺得係。佢係超級 talent 嘅一個人。如果以一個咁嘅年紀嘅時候，誒喺度咧，其實真係英年早逝。即係日本係損失咗一個好叻、好叻、好叻、好叻嘅人。好。好多谢晒，多谢晒 Eric 同我哋嘅分享先。首先多谢你，因为其实接住落嚟啦，我相信无论刚才 Anthony 啦，定系 Eric 咧，其实甚至我哋每一位嘅线上观众啦、得奖者，对中岛英树老师啦，都系认识非常之深噶。咁接住落嚟啦，大家就有机会啦，可以去啊、呃、欣赏一下啦，中岛英树老师啦，为我哋今次啦喺佢生前嘅时候准备嘅简报噶。咁因为咧接住落嚟啦，大家都知道，其实咧我哋今届嘅评。影设计评审入面，其中一位日本评审中岛英树先生啦，喺上个月离开咗我哋嘅。咁我哋对于佢嘅离开啦，感到惋惜难过之余啦，亦都对中岛老师嘅家人同埋亲友致以最深切嘅慰问。
，中岛老师留俾我哋嘅绝对系唔少嘅优秀嘅作品，当中包括有版本龙一嘅 CD 封套啦，吉本巴娜娜嘅书籍设计 ，Kudensha Gandai Shinsho 系列嘅书籍。同埋編輯設計 ，Cut Magic Magazine 嘅藝術指導，仲有直穿手嘅包裝設計、廣告藝術同埋設計書籍設計、展覽目錄以及海報設計等等。中島老師啦，生前亦都係國際平面設計聯盟 AGI 以及東京設計總監俱樂部 Tokyo ADC 嘅成員嚟噶。咁作品亦都被紐約現代藝術博物館 MoMA 同埋大英博物館榮購收藏。We are deeply saddened by the sudden passing of Hideki Nakajima-san, and we would like to extend our deepest condolences to Nakajima-san's family and friends. Nakaji, Hideki Nakajima-san was one of the main judges of the Global Design Awards 2021. His great works included record sleeve for Ruchi Sakamoto, book design for Banana Yoshimoto. Book and editorial design for Kadensha Gendai's Shinsho series, art direction for Cut Magazine, packaging design for Shuimura, advertisement, book design of art and photography, exhibition categories, art exhibition catalogs and poster designs, and many more. He was a member of AGI and Tokyo ADC. His works were in permanent collections at MoMA and also the British Museum. In memory of Hideki Nakajima-san and heartily appreciating his support and contributions to HKDA GDA over the years, we're going to share the materials prepared by Nakajima-san for us during his lifetime, and it will be guided by an interpreter with an voiceover. Hopefully, we can still continue to learn and grow from his great works and yearn for this grand master. The theme prepared by Nakajima Sound for this sharing is how to become a designer who will remain in history. 咁接住落嚟啦，为咗纪念中岛老师，同时亦都答谢佢对 HKDA GDA 一直以嚟嘅支持同埋贡献，我哋将会播放中岛老师生前为我哋今次分享会准备嘅简报，咁亦都会由翻译员以日文同埋广东话为大家旁述噶。咁但愿我哋仍然可以继续喺中岛老师身上。多年嘅精彩作品上面不断学习成长，亦都藉住呢次机会怀念呢一位一代嘅宗师。希望老师喺另一个角度入面享受住设计带俾佢嘅喜悦。皆様、今回のセミナーに参加していただき。ありがとうございます。先月中島先生は厳しい闘病の末にお亡くなりになった。心からお悔やみを申し上げます。よって今回のセミナーのために生前準備した内容を尊敬の気持ちを込めて先生の代わりに内容を読み上げます。各位、どうせだが参加今次のセミナー。遇上一個月。中老老師因病離世，所以唔能夠為我哋站台演講，希望佢能夠安息。好榮幸，我哋響佢生前得到佢嘅協助，準備咗今次 seminar 嘅內容，並將會將內容讀翻出嚟俾大家。歷史に残るデザイナーになる方法，成為能夠名留青史之設計師的方法。第一章、自分の人生において最も影響される作品を探し出すこと。グラフィックデザイナーの場合、本屋に行き、CD ショップに行き、映画を見に行き、たくさんいろんなものを見る。若いうちは吸収力が早いので、良いものをたくさんインプットする。中島先生の場合は、OMD のレコードジャケットを見たことが。決定的な出会いとなった。第一章、尋找自己人生中對自己影響最深遠嘅作品。作為一個平面設計師，去書店、去 CD 鋪、去睇電影，睇多啲唔同嘅嘢。年青嘅時候吸收力比較快，可以灌輸更多好嘅資訊。對中島老師嚟講 ，OMD 嘅唱碟封套係影響得佢最深嘅作品。
第2章最も影響されたものと自分を比較すること最も影響されたものそのデザイナーと自分のスキルを比較する良い方法は例えば壁に1メートルの応線を引く仮に1メートルがその作品だとしてその下に比較した自分の応線を引き経験を積んだら自分の線を更新していく1メートルは 100% として仮に自分が 100% となる条件はその作品の制作者と褒め合うレベルに達すること第二章将对自己影响最深远的作品同自己作比较将对自己影响最深远的设计师同自己的能力作比较一个好的方法就是在墙上面画一条一米的横线假如一米的是那件作品在下面摆自己的作品或另一条横线作比较当累积经验之后再不断更新自己条线假设一米是一百分而自己能够达到同该作品的制作者互相欣赏的程度就为止一百分了第三章十年間は修行してアートディレクターになること理想の会社で十年間はデザイナーとして力をつけるそしてアートディレクターとなり腕試しとして多くのデザインコンペティションで応募するそれは金賞や銀賞が取れるまで続ける第三章通過十年の時間成為一個艺术总監 Art Director 在自己喜意的公司用十年时间增进自己作为设计师的能力成为一个艺术总監之后容易测试自己的能力参加不同的设计比赛直到拿到金奖或者银奖为止第四章世界中の美術館に自分の作品が収蔵される。賞を取るとたくさんの取材が受けることになる。さらにその媒体を見た美術館から作品収蔵の依頼が来る。だからといって決して安心せず、謙虚に仕事を継続する。第四章。令世界各地不同的艺術館收藏自己的作品。只要獲得獎項就會開始接受很多不同的訪問。而通過呢些媒體美術館就會希望能夠收藏你的作品。但是話雖如此絕對不可以安心下來而需要繼續謙虛感工作。書書自分の作品集を作る。仕事の前を見て自分の作品集を制作する。中島先生は今まで10冊ほど出版しているまたお金を稼ぐことに執着したら終わりの時でありその先はない自分に満足せず繰り返していくことで歴史に残るデザイナーへと近づくことができる最後創作自己的作品集向工作的限制制作自己的作品集中岛老师去到最后已经出版过十本作品集仲有假如开始对赚钱呢一回事執着的话就是完结的时候不会再有往后的啦不满足于自我而不断重复就能够进一步接近成为一个可以名流清史的设计师最後まで中島先生のセミナーをお聞きいただきありがとうございました多谢各位宝贵的时间亦都多谢中岛老师对艺术的贡献多谢大家多谢中岛老师为我哋咧准备咗咁多嘅提示同埋启发噶咁喺度咧亦都咧再一次啦祝愿中岛老师嘅家人同埋亲友为诶向佢哋致最深切嘅慰问咁替中岛老师嘅离去感到难过噶
接住落嚟啦，我哋將會啦邀請我哋今日下一位嘅分享嘉賓同我哋分享一下噶。咁下一位啦，為大家分享嘅就係數碼設計嘅評審 Mr. Oscar de la Hera Gomez。Oscar 係女獲殊榮嘅跨界別設計師、科技專家以及 Dallas Line 嘅創辦人。佢嘅作品由現代藝術博物館喺三十幾個國家或者地區發售，咁亦都喺全球二百幾間 Apple 商店入面嘅銷售噶。咁佢曾經參與嘅項目包括有 Apple Watch、Nike Plus 備受矚目嘅一啲大型嘅項目啦，亦都接受過 a l m u n d o 嘅訪問嘅。咁佢亦都曾經以西班牙新進設計師之一嘅身份作客國際當代家具展 ICFF Talks 2017。亦都曾經係 Nike、Intel、Samsung 等二十幾間財富世界五百強嘅企業入面入職嘅。The next sharing judge is from that digital category, Mr. Oscar de la Hera Gomez. Oscar is an award-winning disciplinary designer, technologist, and founder of Data Sign. His work is sold in over 30 countries by the Museum of Modern Art and can be found in over 200 Apple stores around the world. He has worked on high-profile projects such as the Apple Watch Nike Plus and has been interviewed by El Mundo. He has presented as one of Spain's emerging designers at the International Contemporary Furniture Fair (ICFF) Talks 2017, and has worked for over 20 Fortune 500 companies, including Nike, Intel, and Samsung. Before I pass to Oscar, I would like to remind everyone that we will have a Q&A section after Oscar sharing. 喺我咧將個時間交俾 Oscar 之前啊，提一提咁多位線上嘅嘉賓，我哋咧其實喺 Oscar 分享之後，將會有一個問答環節，你哋可以將你哋嘅問題打喺我哋嘅 Q&A box 入面就得噶啦。Now I would like to pass the time to our speaker Oscar, and the topic that he's going to share with us is between the physical and digital. Oscar, please. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and everyone can see the graffiti. Are we going to see the video? It looks good. Okay. I see some nods. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Oscar de la Era Gomez. I am Spanish. I was born in Switzerland. I was raised in Holland. Ten years ago, I was just like most of the students here. I actually hadn't studied design.、Um, I was studying mechanical engineering in Imperial College London. I had sacrificed my love for football、uh, to pursue the ability to create.、Um, when I began to pursue this act of creativity, I realized that I was severely limited.、Um, this came to life when I took a course at the Royal College of Art, where I discovered design.、Um, not only did I feel free because it felt,、um, you know. Less suppressing than endless amounts of mathematics and engineering, but it also taught me the necessity for strategic thinking and everything else that design has to offer. It led me to New York City,、uh, where I had the opportunity to pitch products in the Museum of Modern Art and develop myself as a designer. And for anyone who's seeking education in design, I would strongly recommend it. I feel like without it, you can't really get anywhere.、Um, in my second week at The School of Visual Arts. I created the brand for my company,、uh, Della Sign. So my surname is Della Era, Della Era Design, Della Sign.、Uh, at the time, I thought I wanted to make physical products.、Um, my background in engineering allowed for that, but I had this tremendous passion for the future and for digital products, and it's been quite a journey. Most people ask me what I do, and they give me a really weird look when I say I make physical, digital, and mixed reality product services and experiences. So I'm like, okay, well, I make chopsticks and I make、um, paperweights. I also make experiences that allow your breath to change a physical object or your voice to change a physical object. I also make Applications and websites. I make advertising, and then sometimes, very rarely, those are my favorite. I make mixed reality experiences, whether they're interfaces that allow you to interact for a distance or augmented reality makeup. I have this passion for this term called the digital.、Uh, it came to my life in 2020 when Catherine Weislogo introduced it to me. It essentially refers to a blurring distinction between the physical and the digital worlds, an integration of the virtual. And the real, and 
the first of these explorations, digital creations was the cloud. Uh, I took a class uh, where I created a prototype and this allowed me to work with Richard Clarkson who wanted to put it into a system. The beautiful thing about it was it allowed me to use my engineering knowledge and apply a design lens to create something which I considered very, very nice. The next one that came across uh, was part of my thesis where I wanted to help people overcome emotional trauma through meditation. And spiritual leaders had taught me that it was very difficult to teach meditation because there was no way for a person to actually know whether they were doing it right. So what if we could produce this device, which let you know if you were meditating right. What I ended up creating was this lamp, which would light up very slowly, depending on how you breathe, of course. If you breathe quickly, it lights up very quickly. Um, but the idea was to create this illumination that was very gradual. After that, I would say this is my next digital exploration. The dream was to create an application where a camera could unlock hidden art around the world. It would be available to anyone and the idea was through this interface, you could drop in this place, say, hey, this is the picture it's found in this place. And anyone who could want to find it could find it. Uh, after that, uh, this is the latest and greatest, personally a passion when I was young, I saw myself interacting with a screen. And I remember my grandfather telling me that I would achieve it. At the time I thought he was crazy. Uh, but about two years ago, Apple came out with the ability to detect hand interactions. And it led me on this crazy journey to create an interface which allowed you to interact with the distance. This is probably all making you think about the metaverse. When Meta introduced itself, this word came into our lives and it speaks about this virtual digital world. And you know, there's Rafik and Nike and I love Jeff Staple and this is also the metaverse. And then there's Beeple's NFT, which has you know sold for $69 million. And this is also the metaverse. And, you know, why not? Let's just make a city or a country a metaverse, which by the way, I'm very curious to see what this will be, but it's all a very interesting territory and like also new and all full of excitement, but I'm just so confused by it, or at least I was um, before I began to research it. And I wanted to start by making this statement, which is cryptocurrencies and NFTs are web three. They can be part of the metaverse, but they're not the metaverse. The metaverse is actually a term that was created in 1992 in a novel called Snow Crash by this gentleman called Neil Stevenson, where he envisioned the world where people would coexist in a different world using virtual reality headsets. The word is created by the addition or the portmanteau of the word meta and universe, suggesting that it's the next universe. And of course, the first thing that came into my mind was, well, the Matrix, in that case, must be a metaverse. Right? It's not popularized as a film that introduces the metaverse, but if you think about it, it's, it's a digital world where human beings exist within it. And of course there's a dystopia where robots are sucking our life as electricity. Second life is considered to be the first uh, metaverse. And if you think about it, it's just an MMORPG, a role-playing game where you can party, you can go on quests. There's really nothing that special given everything that's come out that far, but this is the first one. This is the movie that like glorified the metaverse. In 2011, Ernst Klein wrote a book called Ready Player One, where through an oasis, human beings basically could access an infinite amount of worlds and it became its own economy. And if you think about it, it's also an MMORPG, which also means the metaverse actually has already, there are many, many, many metaverses. Um, it's not a new thing. You could say Minecraft is one of them. And I just want to close by saying that Meta has created their own metaverse, but it just reminds me so much of Soretto and wanting to put ads and like destroy this beautiful world that we could create. So there's two paradigms that I think are really interesting that are emerging in this space. Uh, the first one is called Your Land, Your Rules. So it basically says this idea that there's a digital space, you own it, and you can do what you want with it, right? So one of the more famous ones that have come out recently is Nike teamed up with Roblox to create Nike Land, the place for kids to essentially explore campus, which by the way, as a child, I would have loved to be able to, you know, walk around Portland, Oregon and see what it was like, even if it is in the digital world. Um, it's worth noting that Roblox is worth talking about, given that they created the first ever cryptocurrency. As a developer, you could create things for Roblox and Roblox would 
return you with a currency of their own, which you could either spend in the game or trade for real money. The other metaverse equivalent that exists, which is more for adults, is Decentraland. The key thing to take away from this is that there's this currency called mana. You can use it to buy land, to create land on it, to make other people uh, create land on it or services, or you could ex you know, create a service where people pay you with mana. Um, once again, within this space that you own, you're free to do whatever you like. The, another example of your land, your rules is Superworld. Now what makes Superworld interesting is that it's actually a digital map on top of the physical world. So you could own R Mount Rushmore and put Cristiano Ronaldo's face on it if you wanted to. And then let's say anyone took a picture, you could charge them for that picture because it's your land. I'm curious to see where this space will evolve. Uh, the second of the two paradigms that have been arising is called play to earn. Um, I actually foresee this being extremely popular, especially with the rise of esports. Um, the idea is that you play this game and you get rewarded. Now in FIFA, you get FIFA coins, which you can spend on cards to create players, or you know, in other games like Call of Duty, you can invest in weapons or add-ons or skins in League of Legends, for example. The idea is that actually you get rewarded in real money and some people have actually be used it to support their families. Um, Axie Infinity is the most famous. It's a Pokemon style game where you can get rewarded for fighting creatures with creatures. Um, if anyone's interested, there is a QR code in the bottom right. Uh, you can read about it. Um, now that we've covered the metaverse, it's worth covering Web3. Um, what is it and what does it have to offer? Well, if you think about Web3, it actually refers to the next version of the internet. So Web1 is the original internet, Web2 is the next iteration, and Web3 is where we sit today. It's ideas that we're going to separate ourselves from massive companies, that we're all going to split everything across all our devices, and there's not going to be one place that owns everything. So to describe this further, because I believe it's a little bit confusing, or at least it was for me, I wanted to explain what the internet was. Originally, it was created in CERN by a British man who wanted to share scientific journals. He didn't want any advertising. He just wanted the facts. He literally wanted to go in a place where he could access information that would help others and create a space where others could find his information to further advance the world. I must repeat, it had no internet and it looked something like this. It was just a scientific journal. Then came IOX and JavaScript, which allowed for dynamic high design web pages. Amazon is an example. So you could search and then the page would turn, change or you could sign into your account or you could post a product. These are things that weren't possible without these dynamic um, toolkits or software developer kits. And the final one, which is where we sit now, the best example I can give is Siri or Alexa, which is basically machine learning or artificial intelligence within a digital product that is enhancing your experience. It's, it's arranging things for you. It's offering you the right thing at the right time. If anyone's curious on reading more, please uh, scan the QR code in the bottom right. So now that we've covered the metaverse, I want to spend the rest of the seminar covering what it means to create a physical, digital, or mixed reality product, service, or experience. So I believe that anything, it really doesn't matter what it is. You could literally, in the comments section, write something, and I would describe how I would do it using this exact process. But I feel like not enough attention, especially when you're at a student, is placed on the definition. The definition is essentially when you describe what it is that you're doing, what it why it matters, and where it's going to take you, and the results that you're seeking to find. The clarification stage is more of a making stage. It's more of an exploration stage. It's a prototyping stage. It's basically saying, OK, so I feel like this is what I'm going after. Let's make sure that I'm doing it right. More often than not, it's not right. And so you have to go back. Now, this, this back isn't starting from scratch, although I must admit I have done it in my time. The start is actually meant to help you be like, OK, so I've talked to these people, or I've, put, I've created this thing, I've gathered these learnings. Actually, this is what I'm meant to be doing. And then with that definition, based on those new learnings, you clarify it. If you're right, you create it. And I do insist that it's in your interest or anyone's interest to spend as much time as possible in the definition and the clarification, because once you create things at scale, and some of the things I will show you later will demonstrate just how big some things can get, 
it's really, really, really difficult to go back. So the first thing I would recommend all of you is give it a confidential name. Whatever it is that you're doing, before you even know what you're doing, just call it something. For Sam Sam's, I knew that I wanted to help musicians, and I named it after my best friend, Marco, or one of my best friends, Marco, who is a talented, talented musician, and I love him to bits. The next thing I did is I'm like, okay, well, I know I need to help musicians play music without stopping playing music. How could I do that? I then talked to a bunch of friends. I talked to people in the street. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? Oh, that's really interesting. I see that these ones are promising. And then I start to target ideas. I feel like this part where I mentioned that I went out and I talked to people is very important. The program that I went to, the School of Visual Arts, refers to it as design research. It's essentially a process by which you go deeper into a subject area to understand it, the ecosystem, the needs, the desires, the challenges, essentially what it is and how you can make it better. It often happens to be some online research, some statistical analysis. You go and you talk to some people and you gather ideas. It's important that you keep doing this throughout the process. It's not like a one-stop shop or like a one thing that you do once and that's it. No, it's actually in your interest to, as you're creating something, keep talking to people, <laughs> keep doing research, inform yourself. It's gonna make your product experience or service better. I feel like this can all be summarized as design cannot exist in a vacuum, which is one of the great phrases that Sinclair Scott Smith has taught me. This example can actually be demonstrated as going from what's on the right to the one on the left, right? So I created something, I knew that I needed to hold chopsticks together, but it wasn't really an elegant solution. So in my program, I was blessed with having people from the East who avidly use chopsticks. They could inform me on things that personally, I would never ever know. And their focus was very obvious. It was on hygiene and being able to clean a product, right? The final thing, which I personally thought was necessary was I had to represent what I had to do, in this case, the reconstruction of the environment. But as you can see from the designs that I have placed, it elevates it off the table, which is a sense of hygiene, and it provides a rest during your meal, which also offers a sense of hygiene. Now those, all this idea is put together, ended up in the final product, which I thought was great. For the Apple Watch Nike Plus, it was a completely different story. Um, I was an intern. I literally had just started a new job. Uh, they asked me what I wanted. I told them I wanted Nike. I couldn't believe my eyes when they told me that it was going to be possible. They gave me a watch. They gave me a user experience. They gave me basically everything. They said, make it work. Make a product demo. I need this to work for the real world. <laughs> Luckily, as I've mentioned earlier, I wanted to be a professional athlete. I studied sports science. I took it very, very, very seriously. So when they gave this to me, they told me I had one week. I'm like, okay. I took out a whiteboard and I drew some curves. And again, this was a beautiful moment where I could apply my engineering knowledge to create something that quite transparently touched my childhood. The Mac Innovation Lab had a problem, which we had to solve. It happened right at the end. As many of you know, um, in 2020, we suffered a horrible pandemic, right? And although we were collaborating with a Chinese company, that had taken this into account. Unfortunately, the software that we created at that specific moment where we were using didn't work. So we had to create a solution which would allow people to try on makeup wearing masks. Now, how can you do that? Well, I'm grateful to say that I also spent a lot of time creating augmented reality. So I knew what feature points were. Now, some of you might be wondering what are feature points? Well, on the left, I have an example of feature points for your face. This is actually what a computer sees and using these points, it identifies regions. So in the case of the software from Perfect Corp, the nose, if you took the nose away, it wouldn't work. So I did some experiments and I started to see that if there were these patterns, that it would work better, right? If it was flat, it would be over. So if you had a very textured mask with a lot of details, it would work really well. If you didn't, it wouldn't. So I offered them this solution, which involved a very textured mask with like a beautiful sticker that represented the brand and it would work with the software. Um, my thesis was something completely different. Um, I feel like this might speak to the students that are here. Essentially in second year at the program that I studied, we got given a year to target an area of expertise. I chose to target emotional trauma because I personally struggle to recover from breakups or difficult family moments. And I really wanted to find a way that I could help myself. 
I wanted to see if I could not only help myself, but help others. And as part of this, the first thing that I did is I read a lot of books. I became an expert in what I felt was necessary for me to be able to tackle it. I then went and I talked to a series of subject matter experts to try and narrow down on what it is that I could do. And from this, one of the greatest, greatest things came from Emily Roberts. And she basically told me that there was this need to reduce emotional uh, distress quickly. And she pointed me to Dr. Francine Shapiro and EDMR, which is basically this idea that if you slowly move your eyes from right to left, very, very slowly, you will feel relief. And so the first thing I did is I made this animation and then I wondered how I could make it into a physical product that I could share. And it ended up in this beautiful thing where you have to follow a figure of eight as you draw it very slowly. Part of this research helped me understand greater the issues that the people who were on the other side were facing, right? So spiritual leaders and transformational coaches actually struggle to teach meditation. And they told me that would be great, would be if there was something that would help people see that they were doing it right, which came with this idea of a wearable and the light. Once I actually do this research, I feel like I start to, to get an idea of what it is that I'm doing. And I often like to shape them as OKRs. This is something that helps uh, you. It also helps your clients identify what it is that you're doing and why. And I like to break them up into three things. Functional objectives, which is basically what must it do? Visual objective is how must it look? And experiential objectives, how must it feel? How, how is it that you're going to experience it? I feel like breaking it up into these three also allows you to separate them because sometimes functional objectives are very small and visual objectives are very big. So let's go through it. Uh, finito, for example, the idea was to create a mechanism by which people could feel emotional relief. The results are below. Uh, the visual objectives was that it must be minimal and accessible and ideally that they could repeat it after seeing it once, right? So if I show them this, they can grab a piece of paper and a piece of, and a pen and they can do it. They don't need, they don't need my thing. They can do it by themselves. Um, for the chopsticks, I needed to make sure that it couldn't get lost, that it was sustainable and cheap to fabricate, which was actually a manufacturing objective. And visually it must embody its mission, the reconstruction of the environment. And of course, as I mentioned, it must remain hygienic before, during, and after a meal. Uh, for beats tempo, uh, for those that don't know, Beats Tempo is a project envisioned to help, well, it's not envisioned, it is made to help Apple employees sell headphones. Um, so we got given a headset before it's released. We have to find out what the features were. And using these features, we had to create a cinematic display that would let Apple employees learn about features. The application had to be robust and long lasting because in this case, it was actually front facing for consumers in the Apple store, it had to work in 20 languages, and it had to one for one represent the model. The objective of the experience was to make sure that it was fun, that people could take away what it was and that they could remember. Um, the next thing I like to do are user journeys, um, best described by Sinclair as design must be performed, right? We talk about this paradigm of this idea and everything's just very few people actually go out and like, see what it's like, right? So let's say you you have a bottle. Like how many times have you designed the bottle without thinking about how you're gonna hold it or where it's gonna be placed or anything in the above, right? So in my case, I actually did get told to design a bottle. <laughs> it was uh, for Diageo, uh, it was a student competition and they wanted to create one on conscious consumption. So the first thing that I did is I went to a bar. I personally don't like to drink, but I went to see what environment this bottle was going to be placed and how it had to stand out in comparison to the others. This came up with this idea where you can very clearly see that that bottle is very different from the rest. And we were hoping that with this alone, it would gather more attention. Sans hands is a different story. I, the idea actually came from the user journey. I was sitting at the start of the pandemic in my neighbor's house, uh, Blanca is, a Spanish person who works in advertising and her partner, Jackie, teaches music at NYU. And they had put wine and cheese on the table and Jackie was playing music. And Jackie is a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous musician. It's amazing. 
And as we were just peacefully listening to her play, all of a sudden, she had to stop to swipe the screen. And Blanca and I looked at each other and we were like, we have to do something to stop this. We must hear the music. And I feel like that user journey ended up being perfectly demonstrated in this video. And I do suggest that you must perform your user journeys. You must see it and feel it to actually understand what you're trying to tackle. This would eventually allow me to design an app. Um, this is how I like to design the user experience for apps. The idea is that it actually explains how the whole app connects. And I use these orange points to connect places that are difficult to draw lines between. These orange labels also point where the start and the end of these points are. The Mac Innovation Lab had another issue, or well, not issue, it was a really interesting challenge. Um, they wanted to be able to offer lipsticks on a stand and as you picked it up to see yourself wearing it. Now, how on earth do you design something when you've never worn a lipstick is the first issue. So what I did is I grabbed a bunch of pens and like cards and I'm like, okay, so what happens if I have one and I touch a screen? Or what happens if I have one and I put it in the wrong place? What happens if I decide to pick up two? And with a bunch of women in an afternoon, we spent a lot of time laughing, figuring out how, what we would do if we decided to pick up all 16. It was great. Um, once you actually like start to really understand what it is that you're trying to do, my recommendation is that you make design principles. Design principles are something that was taught to me at the MFA Products of Design by IDEO, which essentially allows you to create a way of thinking that you must stick to to be able to achieve something, to make sure that as you go down this crazy process of creativity, that you stay on the right line. Which, trust me, it's difficult. So for Candid, which was the bottle that we pitched to Diageo, it had to be actionable, right? You had to make sure that when you were drinking this bottle, the act of drinking this bottle was an action. It said something about you, that you're a conscious consumer, and this was you. It had to be premium. People had to feel proud about it, and it had to feel like not you, you know, not something that you find on the street. This is this is high class. It had to stand out, right? So that when people don't know about it and they go to a bar, the very first thing that they see is that. And once they see it, we want them to be able to talk about it. Second, I can't see the fifth one. <laughs> uh, for Sans Hands, uh, it was different. The first thing is that I need, I'm, and this is actually something that I feel most products should have, if not all. It should be intuitive. People have to just, they have to get it. The other thing that I had to do is that I had to feel the same if you were touching a screen or if you weren't touching a screen. It had to feel like a premium experience. For me, this meant that everything had to be perfectly fluid and respond to you. And it had to be effortless. Again, I can't see the fifth one. I apologize in advance. Uh, for the S10 campaign, um, this was different. I worked with Starcom. And transparently, what happens in these campaigns, if you're on the production side, is that Samsung or some massive agencies have done most of the work beforehand. And what you have to do is essentially make, make the right selection, right? The creative direction, make sure that it's formatted. And in my case, make sure that it translates into other languages and that it works correctly. And universal, the key visual had to be perfect and represented everywhere. And it had to be cultural, culturally correct, sorry. It couldn't, you know, it, it couldn't say something different in English than it would in Spanish. Once you're past this stage of essentially defining what it is, you have to make it. And I mean it guys, like this is the best part. This is where the fun happens. Ideally test it with people and you will learn so much just from doing it. Not from talking about it, but from doing it. For Solas, as I've mentioned, this involved creating a wearable and I am. Uh, for Tempo, it actually was a very different thing because we spent so much time testing things that never saw the light of day to create something like this, where people would just play with it and it would feel like this cinematic experience that told a story about why you should use these headphones and the features of these headphones. But each one of those interactions has at least a hundred tests of what could have been in different ways from high fidelity to low fidelity to drawings. It was great. Um, for the cloud, 
as I mentioned, it actually came from a, a project at the MFA Products of Design where I made this box that would change light depending on the music that was played between it. This ultimately allowed me to work with Richard Clarkson. And the final thing that I would like to cover today is what happens once you've defined and clarified it, once you actually know. So when working with the Museum of Modern Art, in my case, I was blessed to be working with a design partner. So the knowledge that I'd gathered during my mechanical engineering allowed me to create perfect CAD models to explain how you would have to manufacture something. But so much of the manufacturing, so much of the factory talking, the logistics, everything was done by them. I was blessed and I'm grateful for it. One thing that I did find interesting was how difficult it was for me to pick the final colors and the Pantone, um, I struggled to know what it is, but, or how to call it properly. <laughs> But it's like knowing that these things are actually legitimate colors that factories test, and this is how you like get your quality and having to pick the right one. I thought it was great. It eventually did make it into the store and I did have to make the advertisings for it. And I was blessed to participate in the packaging and I'm very grateful for this. Um, the Mac Innovation Lab, however, is another thing. It's another monster. We're talking about an experience, which is a store, which has at least five partners, which has five augmented reality experiences from creating your own makeup or an eye palette through to customizing the palette itself, which comes with a 3D printer, which is created in China. It also has legendary looks and bold looks, which is just augmented reality effects and makeup. It's like this crazy, crazy thing. They have various technology partners for things that you don't even see inside the store. Perfect Corp, a Chinese company, God bless, they're amazing. They provide an SDK. They work with Estee Lauder to essentially create perfect looks which are mapped digitally. Artist Jet is a Chinese provider which allows you to create custom products using a printer. And we use the service called Artify to create the interface that would then work with the Artist Jet printer. This process, uh, I partook as part of Valtech. Um, thank you for the experience. They have this agile design process. Now, what is an agile design process? Well, it refers to the situation when design and technology and strategy and content creation, and marketing and business goals are all working at the same time. And as one changes, so must the rest, which personally I love and adore. Part of this process also involves validating, right? So if any of you are ever in a technology project, one of the things that they might ask you to start with is, can we actually do this? Um, the answer was yes, so that was great. And the next thing that I had to do is essentially take all of these designs which had been done for years and say, okay, this is how long it's going to take and this is how many people you need. This is often known as scope. As I have mentioned, this is not a normal project and it has multiple, multiple partners. And oh my God, it could not have been bigger. I am blessed to have been a part of it. This is a very brief description of how an application can work at this level, right? So you have things that you're pulling from other points, right? They could be databases, they could be CMSs, they could be perfect corpse API. They have to flow into something. That thing has to consume it, has to offer it to the, the consumer. It's not just the design of the interface. You actually have to design data and then you have to design the analytics of what goes out. And you have to make sure that it refreshes once every 24 hours. The custom printing technology was also kind of crazy. So as I mentioned, we had a partner called Artify, which helped us create the custom products. But we still had to create a product, a, sorry, a website that showed you the products that then worked with their system and ultimately sent it to somewhere that we could read it, which, which we then had to write and collaborate with um, ArtistJet to write a Mac, sorry, a Windows application in Electron that would work with their system so that you would print the custom product. And I had to be on so many conference calls with China and Taiwan to make sure that this would work. And I had like a mask on, it was mid pandemic. I had to cycle through the city. It was, in, it was no one was on the street. It was absolutely amazing, the whole experience. Um, the final takeaway um, that I feel is not really mentioned enough in, in student environments are legal reviews. And I wanted to leave you guys with three takeaways. Um, one thing that you must know is that companies have to 
purge their data every 24 hours, right? You can't just hold on to things forever. Um, you should never ever attach personal information to anything that you're recording. And you must make sure that anything that you do take in can't be pointed at someone ever. It must be anonymous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oscar, for such a wonderful presentation. And um, I would just want to see if there's any question for Oscar. Feel free to type it in the question box. Well, well, um, I would just want to remind everyone that today's judges seminar is also live on our Global Design Awards Facebook page. So if you would like to watch any presentations afterwards, feel free to watch a replay at our Facebook page. HKDA Global Design Awards Facebook so once again, I think taking this opportunity, I would like to thank Oscar for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I guess lots of our audiences learn from Oscar. And now I would like to introduce our next speaker for everyone. Tipchilotla, 科學科技創意資訊工作室專門為本地和海外的客戶開發生產品和戰略產品的品牌 For our next speaker, he is Mr. Ron Long from the Product Category and Ron is a creative director of Lim Design Work. He made the studio into a cross-disciplinary creative consultancy studio specializing in new product development and strategic product branding for local and overseas clients. As a passionate advocate of the value of design in society, he was also the chairman of the Hong Kong Designers Association in 2016 to 2018. He contributed himself in serving on various advisory, panels of different professional organizations and educational bodies. And before I pass the time to Ron, just want to remind everyone that we will have a Q&A section. And the topic that Ron is going to share with us is witness the change of Hong Kong industry with design. Ron, are they making a lot of Sorry, I've got my mic off. Can I, let me see how I can share the screen. So, is it done? Can you see the screen? Hello? Yes, yes, we can see it. So, this is it. Uh, thanks very much uh, for being here, and thanks um, HKDA for having me here to do the sharing. Um, I'm Ron Leung, you know, I, I, um, I'm the creative director of RI and design work as introduced. And having been in the, in the industry for quite a while, um, I will try to illustrate uh, to you today the metamorphosis of Hong Kong's uh, manufacturing industry um, through the eye of uh, a combo industrial designer and through um, the works I have been doing along uh, this few decades. Um, for those who might not be very uh, um, familiar about the uh, geographic location of Hong Kong, so I show you this um, Asia map. Hong Kong is here, right in the center of uh, East Asia, to most other um, major cities in, around Asia, 
it takes less than five hours. So um, this is the geographic convenience, and that's why it makes Hong Kong an ideal place for um, to be the uh, regional portal for international business, as well as the um, um, transport center. Yeah, let's look at the time, the industrial timeline for Hong Kong. Hong Kong has started its um, industrial development from as early as the 1860s, around 20 years after the British has um, possessed the sovereignty of Hong Kong. Uh, unlike what we generally perceive today, Hong Kong has been a um, manufacturing center of light product industry. In fact, Hong Kong starts from heavy industry, which is uh, more precisely shipbuilding. The, um, the geographic convenience, as I uh, mentioned earlier, has explained the reason. And it was not until um, around 90 years later, uh, before Hong Kong has really started its um, uh, manufacturing industry, on, on, on uh, light products. Around the um, 1950s, when there's a lot of immigrants uh, come to Hong Kong uh, from mainland China who uh, were uh, escaping from the uncertainty of the, uh, of the politic, uh, political uh, scenario up there. And so they brought in a lot of capitals as uh, as well as uh, the um, um, technical knowledge here, together with uh, a lot more uh, labor, immigrant from um, southern provinces of, of China. So all in a sudden, Hong Kong has become, uh, has, has been changed from a, a tiny little fish spot to um, po a densely populated city. And as the, uh, the market grows, there's a, a, a lot of uh, requirements on the day-to-day -day commodities. So uh, many new immigrants have started building the factories to um, manufacture the goods to satisfy their own needs. And after the two decades, around uh, two decades of development, the um, manufacturing industry in Hong Kong has gradually transformed from uh, labor-intensive um, manufacturing to uh, a more inter uh, intelligence in intensive uh, uh, manufacturing. In 1972, the Hong Kong government has established the Hong Kong Technical Institute uh, and to systematically uh, nurture local professionals to uh, cater the needs of the, um, the uh, ever growing industry. Uh, that was when uh, design education started in Hong Kong. And the Hong Kong Design Technical, uh, Hong Kong Technical Institute has later become today's Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Okay, let's go back to the uh, timeline. From um, okay, from the, the starting of the industry, uh, uh, the systematic start of uh, from fifties to seventies, the products were made uh, uh, mostly made in Hong Kong and sold locally uh, with some of them exported to the uh, overseas market, especially uh, around Southeast Asia. As the production te uh, technique um, and the quality have become so mature and, and becomes more competitive, many international buyers were um, attracted to place the order, uh, uh, the production order and they provide, uh, normally they provide their own uh, designs for the local factories to materialize and, and so to their, their respective uh, markets. And that is when the uh, big OEM era, the uh, original equipment manufacturing era started. And most uh, manufacturing uh, products were designed in somewhere else uh, about the customers come to Hong Kong. So they made in Hong Kong and then sold to overseas. And from the 70s to 80s, as the, the local cost on labor and um, um, manufacturing were getting um, more expensive, 
and uh, also owing to the uh, opening policy of the mainland China. Then many manufacturers have moved the uh, production plants to China while keeping the um, R&D, the research and development uh, uh, departments in Hong Kong. Uh, as the competitions among manufacturers has uh, also become serious, manufacturers then start to offer their, their own designs to attract more international buyers uh, to, be, to become more competitive. And the ODM era uh, start from then. And uh, at that period of time, uh, imported were mainly designed in Hong Kong, made in China, and then sold to overseas. Then after the year 2000s, as the, uh, the industry of mainland China has grown rapidly as well, with abundant of locally trained professionals, um, mainland manufacturers have become more competitive while the scale of Hong Kong industry has, has, has started diminishing. And also many R&D departments have been moved to China from Hong Kong. Then uh, from that time on, um, that comes to the age of designed in Hong Kong and China, made in China and sold to overseas. Oh, like how I run. Yes. Uh,我哋咧個收音啦，可能誒聽得唔係太清晰，想聽你支麥咧，可唔可以教得誒近你自己少少咁個聲音可能會更加清脆？或者係我接近少少麥有冇？誒，OK，OK，而家好OK啦
coming to the 90s, when the manufacturing um, industry was still thriving and uh, the design business was busy. So they, um, of course, so they, they, the jobs is a lot, but uh, it's in a, in a way different from what I have learned in school, of course. So it's real reality. And, uh, and when I've been the, in the uh, service industry for a while, I'm getting more and more familiar with the structure of uh, manufacturing and the technical and the, and the do's and don'ts become more uh, um, confidence and affirmative to about my design direction. <laughs> and during that uh, era, or the period of time, watching clocks uh, was one of the key sector of Hong Kong manufacturing. So this was um, a watch I designed for competitions. And luckily I got awarded and followed by that, I got some uh, design projects on watches, which are quite uh, fashion oriented. Besides watching clock, um, audio products was also one of the key pillar of uh, Hong Kong manufacturing. Uh, of manufacturing. Uh, these are some uh, sound sketches and the rendering I uh, submitted to my customers. Uh, that was the ages before uh, Photoshop or Illustrator has become popular, uh, popular tools for designers. I can make all this by hand. So this was a quite a, a typical project for a, a product designer. Philips came to me with um, a product, the, the real case of that, and with all the mechanisms, it is just, just want me to redesign the front panels according to the back case uh, for them. And you know, because they, they didn't want to, to uh, invest extra on the new product while all the functions are basically the same. They just need different products to supply to different markets, different price range. So I, I um, designed this product, which uh, later produced this real product. And uh, it turned out that the, uh, this product uh, was quite uh, popular and uh, Philips decided to, uh, to expand this design. And so they asked me to um, multiply this, uh, this same design DNA to more products. So this was another uh, uh, unit I designed with a, a CD player on top. Sorry for the poor quality of this picture because actually I didn't uh, take any pictures uh, on, on my phone. I just find this a couple of years ago on, on Google's on the uh, secondhand exchange platform. Uh, seems that they're still working. That is. And uh, some more audio products. Uh, the music center designed for Philips. Uh, uh, the the um, other brands under Philips and brand. And this kind of uh, the electronic sketches were also uh, very popular items during that uh, period of time. Uh, the right hand, the one on the left was um, uh, a radio, clock radio, and the one on the, the right was a um, trapping alarm clock, which are all uh, replaced by a smartphone that we have today. So these are all meaningless. And also some lighting design in the uh, 90s. And coming to uh, year 2000s, uh, as the manufacturing kept, kept um, diminishing in Hong Kong, I was actually um, in a status of puzzle and uncertainty and uh, getting sick, a bit sick and tired of what I uh, have been doing. When uh, it came to the chance, I just joined an Italian-based international company and quit my own business. I was appointed uh, pre, uh, as regional creative director uh, to overlook all creative marketing design, um, including display solutions, uh, trade shows, visual merchandising, retail design, marketing events, and uh, branding. So I would say that's uh, the, the years of uh, transformation. So um, this was uh, the uh, you know the, the typical things I, I have done in the, 
and that uh, that company. The um, display stands for eyewear, I designed for Giorgio Armani, and uh, more display items designed for other fashion brands. So this, plot, this kind of products were the key uh, business of uh, the company I joined. They produce all these uh, eyewear and, and, and globally market them uh, for the fashion brands. And the one on the left was an uh, eyewear case designed for Gucci. Uh, what well, the, the right hand side is, is uh, a POP items. And at, at that moment, I, my role has been has changed a little bit from being a partner of the manufacturing industry to a customer who order place order to the industry. It's a, a counter mirror placed on the optical stores, and also it, it is a um, marketing uh, uh, product with the expose of the logos and, you know, uh, on, on the order retail shops. All right, after five years, um, around five years, I'm working in the uh, company High Edge Suite and uh, come, came out again and uh, found the LIM design work. Uh, okay, and anyway, I, I was uh, still missing and, uh, and enjoying design products. So, that's why I think you know I, I uh, brought an end to my creative marketing things and uh, go back to uh, designing products for, for my and and uh, generating uh, new product lines for my customers from Hong Kong and uh, overseas. This was a um, actual phone a phone hub uh, internet internet phone box uh, before. Uh, the, the apps like um, uh, Skype or WhatsApp has become popular uh, as an internet phone tool. So the um, companies would install this kind of uh, a phone box inside the office so that they can communicate with the, the offices uh, from, from other part of the world or uh, from the manufacturers in China. And Gifts and premiums was also one of the remaining uh, industry in Hong Kong during that moment. Um, most uh, the European customers tend to love the uh, creativity and design of Hong Kong design or uh, Hong Kong products, so they uh, were willing to pay for a higher profit margins to buy this kind of lifestyle and uh, uh, premium product from Hong Kong. So I've done quite uh, a lot. Of in that period of time, these uh, were uh, name card case and the tablecloths and uh, or lifestyle products. And coming to the um, third decade of the third millennium, uh, from then both the manufacturing uh, and design industries are both so desperately to find a way out and try to find new possibilities. Uh, I would regard the uh, current state as a year of uh, collaborations. Uh, the relation between uh, the industry and uh, designers has, uh, has been migrated from client and service provider to project partner. And uh, from also the uh, accessibility of, of uh, uh, the industry becomes more open-minded and they uh, look for uh, design uh, designs with some um, uh, high creativity and uh, with the new value for that. So this uh, was the scissors are designed for very traditional scissors manufacturers. They wanted something new and different, so I gave them this new and different scissors. And uh, this was um, highlighter. Highlighting pen are designed for uh, clients from the Middle East. They were target for the medium to high market. So I designed this series of uh, highlighter together with uh, the display box for them. For the same company, I um, yeah, these are simple uh, pencil sharpener actually, but I have more rooms to play with the concept and see and how I can maximize the ergonomics concerns on our day-to-day uh, -day pencil sharpening uh, idea. So I, I designed this series. 
also um, this was an induction hub designed for a French brand. Besides um, commercial commodities, um, I have also a, a um, chance to explore more possibilities to, uh, to work to apply the design on other sectors, including like uh, social innovations. This was an input in key devices, which is a keypad for um, the physical needs of um, patients who are suffering from um, a cerebral palsy. They, they can't uh, control their the limbs effectively, so they need a special device for them to do the day-to-day -day computer inputting. So this was uh, the, um, the device we conduct a lot of a few studies of the uh, the people who, who suffer from the, 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 the uh, physical conditions. And another, this was um, navigating systems for the visually impaired people. The round one at the right uh, left side are the transmitters, which was uh, um, installed in public area. It transmit all the uh, necessary informational signals to the receiver, which is the one on the right. It was carried by the blind people to uh, work together with their the phone or smartphone and collect all the necessary information for the direction, uh, the wayfinding, and for the, um, the business nature inside the venue, or even can apply to bus stops, so giving them more information about the bus coming and, and so on. And coming to the, this is really the, the third um, decades of the third millennium uh, after year two, uh, 2020. And uh, yeah, this is what I said earlier, the, the year of collaboration. Uh, this was a project organized by the Federation of Hong Kong Designers uh, Associations. Uh, they just reached out to two parties, one from the uh, in, uh, design uh, side, the others from the uh, manufacturing side. So, they came together and co-create the products that they, uh, they both feel uh, fit the problem of the party. So this was a um, traveling notebook made of a uh, letter uh, cover. I uh, collaborate with uh, station, stationary manufacturers in Shenzhen. And, uh, and also luckily this got a few design awards and this is another collaborating project uh, organized by the HKDA. I was a, I, I teamed up with a, um, a young school student who was around 10 to um, 11 years old. He came up with the ideas, he's, he's really a genius, uh, with the, the a little electronic gadgets that he programmed and, and composed and I helped him to materialize the, uh, the, the concept and transform it into uh, a, a commercial commodity to, which can be sellable in the market. So I just turned uh, the idea into uh, an object hunter, object hunting robot. Actually, they can uh, patrol on the ground during the daytime and look for something you might have dropped on the ground and disappear from time to time, like a needle, like a, a, a screw, a small, small plus that we use from, from time uh, in our daily life. So this um, little robot will, will deploy AI and look at the ground and find the little things, collect them and give it back when you get back home. And, uh, and more, I start uh, initiate my own project uh, on the design, I believe, and invite more uh, uh, collaborating partners from the industry to work together. So this is one of the uh, items, which is an uh, audio product. And um, some tableware as well. Uh, uh, this is pair of chopsticks. So if uh, Oscar is interested, he can contact me and see how we can uh, cooperate on the, his uh, ongoing uh, project of, of chopsticks. Tableware. Uh, yeah. And there's always a questions come to my mind. So, we, I have come all the way through to this moment. And what's next? What's next for designers in Hong Kong? And what's the next for the design, uh, the manufacturers of Hong Kong? 
uh, I will give this finding versus for creation. A lot of uh, remarkable elites doing remarkable things in their own uh, sectors. If why don't we just gather them together and um, work together like a hackathon or whatever? Um, so I really believe design and designers can be a good agent or catalyst to um, to be the, the pivot point um, that make more meaningful solutions to the society, uh, make the world a better place through the collaboration of all these um, remarkable people from different sectors. Uh, the next thing is design and te uh, technology innovation. Following the rise of new uh, technology in recent years, we found uh, many new things coming out in like every year. Something like uh, nanotechnology, the uh, biochemistry, robotic, big data, artificial uh, intelligence, and so on. And design can be an important key to give meanings to this technology and uh, to really benefit humanity. Uh, last but not least, the reconciliation with nature. As designers, let's not forget to put Mother Nature in our mind when we are, are looking for a new solution for our designs. Uh, please remember from time to time, make it eco-friendly and sustainable as possible when we are exercising our creativity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, for sharing with us how actually um, the Hong Kong industry changed with the sign. And due to time constraint, I think we can't move forward to the Q&A section, but we do welcome everyone if you have any questions or even um, um, like you would like to seek advice, feel free to reach out to Ron privately or you can actually send him messages through the uh, chat box function. Sorry, Hiru 同當地製造商合作,經營八個原創內部自家品牌,包括服裝,分香,文具,同埋餐具等等. Now we would move to the next judge from the product category, Yosuhiro Hiruchi-san. Hiruchi-san is CEO and Creative Director of Trunk Design, a design studio and lifestyle store in Japan. Hiruji san works with traditional craft and local industries in Hyogo Prefecture and all across Japan, supporting the industry in product design and development, branding strategy, as well as sales development domestically and internationally. He launched Hyogo Craft as a platform in 2011 to introduce the craftsmanship of Hyogo Prefecture to the world. Working with local manufacturers, he operates eight original in-house brands that include apparel, incense, stationery, and tableware. Today, we also offer simultaneous interpretation in Japanese and Cantonese for this sharing. You're welcome to click the globe icon at the Zoom toolbar to choose Japanese or Cantonese. Without further ado, I would like to pass the time to Yosuhiro Hiruchi-san, and the topic that he is going to share with us is Designing for Local Japan, a look into the work of Japanese studio, design studio Trunk Design. Yosuhiro-san, please. Thank you. 
はい、皆さん、こんにちは。トランクデザインの堀内です。えー、日本からあ今日はプレゼンテーションをお送りしていきます。よろしくお願いします。翻訳は大丈夫ですかいけてますかあシェアスクリーンズ、OK? No p r o b l e m y e s we can see the screen perfectly. OK, OK. Thank you. はいえー、と僕はですね、1981年神戸で生まれまして、えー、今あ、2009年からですね、2008年、えー、独立をしてデザイン事務所をしております。で、えー、今あいる場所もそうなんですけども、デザイン事務所とショップがあ一緒になった場所でデザイン事務所をしております。で、えーお店にはですね、えー、兵庫県で作られた、僕の地元ですね、えー、兵庫県で作られたものを販売しております。2016年に、えー、一つ隣の町にですね、カフェを作りました。で僕たちの仕事は地元兵庫県の伝統工芸だったり、地場産業,地場産業のプロデュースをしているんですけども、地元の農家さんや漁師さんのプロデュースもしていることもあり、えーまあ、食べる、またはこう食器を実際に使うという体験をしていただくためにカフェを運営しております。はい、でに去年ですね、昨年、2021年にもう一つの場所をオープンしました。プロトタイプをばっかり販売しているお店なんですけども、プロトという名前のお店を運営しています。ここは印刷のファクトリーとショップが一緒になった場所です。プロトという名前をつけたんですけども、ここはですね、僕らがこうデザインをしていく中で、えー、生まれるプロトタイプ、あとまたはあのいろんなあお仕事を一緒にしているメーカーのプロトタイプのみを販売しています。えー、こういう感じでですね、60今6歳の職人さんも一緒にこう仕事をしているような感じです。はいえーまあ、ここからちょっとあの僕たちの会社の概念をご説明いたします。もともとグラフィックデザインの会社なんですけども、今は地元のものづくりの企業ですね、えー、いろんな作り手の方々とか職人さんと仕事をしているんですけども、日本全国、いろんな日本のローカルの地域を編集していて、そのものづくり以外にですね、その土地の文化だったりとか、食だったりとか、そういうものも含めて発信をしています。で、それをこう地域編集者という分かりやすい僕らの会社の概念です。で、1番、地域や産地のここにしかないを見つける、結構リサーチを大事にしていまして、えーまあ、ここにしかないもの、この人にしか作れないものは何かみたいなものを探す、えー、そこから課題を見つけて、えー、僕らの仕事であるクリエイティブで、えー、それを解決していく。で、えー、外の目を持って世界に発信する。やっぱこう地元にいたりするとですね、あのその良さっていうのが分からないので、えー、外から見て、それを日本のローカルの良さを世界に発信しています。あと、やれることはすべてやる。これはですね、デザインをやるだけではなくて、えー、海外に輸出するとか、あ販売をしていくとかあ、そういうことも含めてお手伝いをしています。あと、愛を持ってプロジェクトに取り組む。こうお,お金だけのためにですね、デザインをやるということではなくて、えー、お互い愛を持って、えー、その仕事に取り組むと。あと、フラットな関係性を作る。えー、仕事をもらう方があの
下とか、うん、仕事をお願いする方が上とか、そういう上下関係ではなくてですね、パートナーとして、えー、一緒に仕事をしています。あと、結果にこだわる。えー、ちゃんと物が売れる、売れている結果にこだわって仕事をしています。はい、でさっきのまあリサーチをするというところなんですけども、産地に、えー必ず行ってですね、現場に行って、えー、そこにしかないものを、素材とか技術、伝統、地域性、文化あみたいなところをリサーチをして、えーまあ、デザインというところで、まあ、編集をしていきます。で、えー、後ほどご紹介しますけども、僕たちもオリジナルのプロダクトをのブランドを持っているので、えー、そこからこう流通ですね、マーケットに流していく。でそこのおいろんなマーケティングリサーチをしたものをおまたあ作り手、えー、産地の方にフィードバックをして、えー、商品のブラッシュアップをしていく。でそこから、えー、ものがですね、産地で作られて、えー、僕たちが編集して、えー、いろんなお店で販売していく。まあ、そこから次、観光、おーツーリズムですね、えーそえー、産地に訪れて、えー、直接職人さんと出会い、えー作っている現場を見て、えー、物を買う、またはこうリペアをするみたいなことを伝えています。ここからあの僕らの会社の部署ですね、チームを紹介していきます、えー。クリエイティブデザインがこれがメインの仕事になります。そこから、えー、自分たちのブランドを持って商品を作っているので、メーカーとしてもやっております。であとはあ日本国内、あと海外ですね、香港もたくさんのお店に、えー、僕たちの商品、お取り扱いをいただいてますので、海外の輸出もやっています。あと、ショップですね、えー、ショップを今、3店舗とカフェをやっていて、あと、自分たちの,あの兵庫県のです、ね、ものづくりをメディアとしてしっかり取材して、えー、日本国内、えー e コマースで販売をしています。と、プリンティングファクトリー、えー、印刷会社というあの、この6つの部署で、えー、ブランクデザインが成り立っています、はいで。僕たちの仕事はですね、職人さんがこう作っている商品自体を、まあ、いかに、えー、使う方あ、消費者にお届けをしていくか、あその伝える、まあ、手段をあいくつか。あるかなと思っているんですけども、プロダクトデザインをする商品自体で、その産地の良さだ、技術みたいなものを伝えていく。またはメディアとして取材をして、しっかりその人たちの思いだったりとか、そこの産地の歴史みたいなものを発信しています。で、販売の手段ですね。オンラインストア、あと自分たちのショップ、あとはセレクトショップに、えー、で販売していただく。あと海外のセレクトショップでも販売していただく。まあ、いろんな方向から使い手の方々にお届けをしています。えー、近年ですね、まあ、いろんな日本のプロジェクトに参加させていただいていて、えー、今回もこういうグローバルデザインアワードに呼んでいただきましてありがとうございます。えー、僕はですね、もともと広告のデザインをしていたんですけども、2009年に神戸マッチ株式会社という会社と出会いまして、皆さんご存知ですかね、持っている人もいるかもしれない、火をつけるマッチを作っている日本の会社です。ここと出会ってですね、こういう火をつける道具をやっぱ未来に残していきたいなというところから、ローカルインドストリーのデザインというところに興味を持って活動をしています。はい、2009年に立ち上げたブランドはですね、マッチデザインファクトリーというブランドをやっていたんですけども、これが80年から100年前にデザインされたマッチを復刻して、えー、多分世界最小キャンバスなデザインだと思うんですけども、こういうのを販売をしていました。または、あそこに描かれたデザインを
を抜き出して T シャツを作ったりですね。あと、お茶、お茶の葉っぱが入ったマッチを作ったりとか、あ長い軸のマッチを作ったりとか、まあ、いろんなマッチの商品開発をずっとやってきてですね、2015年に日々という商品を発売しました。これはですね、まあ、あの皆さん見たことある方もいらっしゃるかもしれませんが、マッチの軸のところがお香になっていて、インセンスになっていて、そこの頭にです、ね、マッチがついて、火をつけて、そのまま香りを楽しめる商品になっています。これも日本のグッドデザインアワード2019のベスト100、ベストフォーカス賞という2つの賞を受賞して、台湾デザインアワードのゴールデンピンを受賞しました。このマッチもお香もですね、僕らの地元、兵庫県の地場産業、2つの産業がコラボレーションして生まれた商品です。でいかに火をつけるマッチの形状に、まあ似たように作るのかあです、ね、あと香りの選定だったりとかあ、クリエイティブパッケージみたいなことをお手伝いしています。はい、で今はあ日本国内、えー、500店舗以上でお取り扱いを、えー、していただいていて、海外は、ま、もう35カ国に出荷をしています。でえー、いろんなあ海外の方々も、あのーファクトリーツアーをしてですね、えー、地元の作り手の方を見ていただきました。2011年、先ほどご紹介もいただきましたけど、兵庫クラフトというプロジェクトをやっております。えーまあ、日本でですね、兵庫県って皆さんあのご存じない方もいらっしゃいますが、大阪の隣で、えー、にある町です。で2つの海、これ、下の方が瀬戸内海、上が日本海なんですけど、2つの海を持つ大きな町で,でして、えー、まあ上の方は雪が降る、下の方は全く雪が降らない、で気温も文化も言葉も違う、こういう多様な土地から生まれるものづくりをずっと巡ってですね、いろんな職人と一緒に仕事をしています。でこれ先ほどご紹介した兵庫クラフトのメディアですね。こちら、英語、中国語のページもあるので、兵庫クラフト .com で調べていただいたらご覧いただけるかと思います。はいでえっと、僕たちはですねあの、職人さんと一緒に仕事を作っていく、一緒にお金を作っていくということもやっています。まあ、通常のデザイン事務所だとお金をもらってデザインを作るそういう仕事のやり方なんですけども僕らは職人やメーカーから素材を買い取って商品を作ってコンシューマーに販売をしてその得たお金をまた職人さんにお支払いをして素材を買っていくという循環をやっています。でこれが一番最初に作ったプロダクトです。森の器という、森が見えるテーブルウェアを作っています。これは間伐材って分かりますかねこう。いい木を育てるためには、周りの木を少しずつ切って、こう日が当たるようにとか、成長をさせるために小さな木を切っていくんですけれども、その切られた木を使って器を作っています。職人が一つ一つあの削ってですね、作っているんですけど、この器の裏には数字が書いていて、何年の何月に切られたのか、そして緯度経度ですね。えー、位置情報が入っているので、えー、この木がどこで育っていたのかあ、Google マップで検索すると場所が分かるようなあものになっています。でこれもあのプロダクトのデザインというかはあ、いろんな要素のデザインが入っていて、えー、森をきれいに保っていくためには、あそこにはあお金がすごく必要なので。
、えー、そういう木からあ、そういう森から出た木を活用して、えー、その土地の職人がこれを作り、えー、地元のお店で販売をして、えー、いろんな消費者に、コンシューマーに商品が渡り、そのお金でまた森林を整備していくという循環を作っています。えー、あとはアパレルのブランドです。これもオリジナルのファブリックを自分たちでデザインして、えー、職人さんに、えー、折ってもらい、えー、それを買い取って、えー、シャツにしたりとか、あカバンを作ったりとかということをやっています。でえー、そういう職人さんといろいろ話をしていく中で、えー、デッドストックの生地ですね、えー、昔サンプルで作った生地。があるんだけどというのをご相談をされて、それをすべて買い取りですね、こちらもシャツやパンツを作っています。でもう再生産されないデッドストックの生地なので、まあ、一点物とかあこれ、この生地でシャツが2枚しか作れない、そういう偶然的な出会いのプロダクトです。でこれがですね、同じ淡路島のさっきの日々と同じお香メーカーさんと一緒に作った手すき和紙のお香ですね、和紙インセンス。スティック状のお香を作って、それをまた粉に戻して、手すき和紙の原料と混ぜて作っています。それをこう葉っぱの形にレーザーでカットして、葉っぱをちぎって、火をつけて、えー、香りを楽しむで。火をつけなくてもですね、あの名刺ケースとかあ、お財布なんかに入れて、お手紙に入れたりとかして、えー、香りを楽しんでいただくこともできます。でえー、これは磁器ですね、えー。王子山焼きという王子山セラミックスとコラボレーションして作ったあプロダクトですこれは2人の,あの職人さんがあこういう小さな工房で作っているんですけども独特なあ技法削りの技法だったりとか、まあ、あの青磁という緑の釉薬を使って、えー、作るのが特徴的なあプロダクトです。でえー、昔はこう絵をつけたりとかですねえー、こういう型押しみたいなことをやっていた、今もやってるんですけども、おこういう昔ながらの伝統的な模様はですね、えー、今の若い人たちがあ今の生活の中であの使えるかと言われるとなかなか難しい、えー、デザインなので、えー、今の食文化ですね、えー、に合う,うサイズ、形を,を作りました。<笑>で、えー、伝統的なあ技法やあ色はそのままにして、えー、同じ形でもお色が違う,う、技法が違う,うデザインをしています。で、えー、3色、3技法で、えー、作っているんですけども、これを見るだけで、えー、大路山焼という,うプロダクトの定義ですね。が分かるようなデザインにしています、はいでえー、と2年前ぐらいですね、えー、福井県、えー、鯖江市、えー、というところが、あ越前漆器、えー、ラッカーウェアですね、を作っている産地とコラボレーションして、LR というブランドを作りました。えー、日本の漆器も海外製品やプラスチック製品が普及で、なかなかどんどん売れなくなってきているので、その職人さんの技術を残すためにデザインの手伝いをしています。で一つ一つ、こういう薄い木のパーツを作って、角を組み合わせていく。これ全部1枚ずつの板なんですけども、それをつなぎ合わせて角を止めるという技術を持っている職人さんなので、これが見えるような
あデザインをしています。で、丸、角、多角形、形と塗りですね、ラッカーをミックスする、それと伝統工芸と暮らしっていうのをちゃんとしっかりとつなぎ合わせていくというのをコンセプトにプロダクトを作っています。でえー、今回、えー、コロナウイルスで,です、ねえー、香港に行くのを楽しみにしていたんですが、あこういう事態で行けなくなってオンラインになってしまったんですけども、えー、日本でオンラインでのクラフトマーケットを2年前に開催をして、そこの代表も務めています。やっぱりお店が日本でもクローズをしてしまったりとかあいろんな作り手さんの商品の販売する場所がなくなってしまったりしている中で,ですね作っている人と使う人が直接オンラインに出会いオンラインでのファクトリーツーリズムというのを開催して実際に職人さんの工房を見学してその場で質問をして、EC サイトで商品が買えるというようなマーケットイベントを開催しています。こういう感じで,です、ね、いろんなメガネを作っている人だったりとか、ガラスを作っている人だったりとか、そういう人の工房を実際にオンラインで見学をして、作り方を学ぶみたいなことをやっています。はいえー、とあと台湾でもあの結構僕仕事をしていましてですね出版社のコンサルティングだったりとか台湾で商品を販売したりとかあと台湾デザインセンターと一緒に台湾の工芸のプロダクトデザインをやらせていただきましたでこれ TOKI というブランドを一つ作ったんですけども2人の,あの職人さんと一緒に、えー、こ,このプロダクトはあ作りました。あ1つはですね、えー、木工の彫刻、まあ、香港でもあるかわかんないんですけど、仏壇ですね、もともとはこう仏壇の彫刻をしていたあクラフトマンと一緒にですね、えー、こういう一つ一つ彫って、えー、花をこう作っていく、まあ、大きなあーアートを作っている方なんですけども、なかなか大きなアートはですね、お金が高くて、皆さんが買えないのですごい小さなパーツに切り抜いて、アクセサリーを作るというようなブランドを作りました。であとは、ウルシ塗り、これもラッカーですね、を作っている職人さんとですね、塗りっていうのをにフォーカスをして、これもいろんなアクセサリーを一緒に作ろうというので、こういうコンセプトですね。満月の日にしか作らない、晴れの日しか作らない、雨の日だけこの作業をするみたいなコンセプトで、こういうピアスだったり、イヤリングを作っています。はい、あともう一つオンラインでご紹介をさせていただきたいんですけども、こちら、えー、っと、1月、今年の1月にも香港で開催をしました。ローカルクラフトジャパンというプロジェクトです。で、このプロジェクトはですね、日本のいろんなローカルを皆さんに、ぜひ、ここにいる皆さんも、日本に来れるようになったらですね、ぜひ参加していただきたいんですけども、僕らがずっといつもお仕事している職人さんに出会っていただくというようなクラフトツーリズムです。日本の5箇所ですね、新潟、京都、奈良、長野、広島、こういう地域にステイしていただいて、クラフトマンの作り手の技術と、見て、えー、いろんなコラボレーションをしたりとかあ、いろんなワークショップをしたりとかあを体験していただけるものになっています
、一つはテーブルウェアですね。あと、ガラスと漆。あと、おりん。シーンって鳴らすおりん。あと、吉野林業という、吉野シダーですね。えー、あとはデニム。こういう産地を巡っていただいて、デニム糸から生地を折るところ、またデニムに仕上げる縫製をするところみたいなところを見学していただけるようなプロジェクトになっていますので、ぜひ、これは英語も中国語もサイトがありますので、ご覧ください。僕のプレゼンテーションは以上です。ありがとうございます。Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Yusuhiro san.、Um, so, just want to see if there's any questions for. Well, I can see the comments are impressive, wonderful. And just want to see if there's any questions for Yasuhiro san.、Uh, feel free to type it inside the chat box. But at ほかべれや。ほ、あ、um,、ほ、今呢个时候咧，我见到就有一条问题啦。Um, I can see there is a question for um、uh, from the audience. Ah,、uh, the question is actually asking. Trunk Design is a it's a very local Japanese brand, and um, it actually has a lot of interaction with the community. So during ah、uh, since the establishment. Establishment of trunk design. Do you encounter any difficulties or challenges, and how did you overcome it then? 最初の方がちょっと聞こえなかったので、もう一度言ってもらってみますか。うん。Um. Okay. Let me repeat.、うんうん、okay. うん。うん、うんうんうんうんえー、っとやっぱ職人さんは作るっていうあの技術はすごいんですけどもコミュニティ職人ね佢哋嘅呢一個、呃、技術呢方面非常非常之好啦咁但係都好不好不幸咁講啦就係佢哋喺呢一個溝通方面呢。係比較困難，因為佢哋佢溝通方面可能即係同平時出面都係比較少聯絡啦。咁啊喺販賣方面啦，或者係同海外嘅公司合作嘅時候咧，我哋公個作為呢一個公司咧，就主要係作為一個溝通嘅渠梁啦。咁除咗喺設計方面啦，喺販賣方面咧，我哋都會作為嗰、那個嗰、那個溝通嘅渠嘅嘅橋梁喺度嘅。係啦，咁喺呢一方面咧，我哋會將喺花多啲時間咧，去主要係喺呢一方面，即係同誒我哋嘅客人客户方面啦，亦都同一翻我哋嗰個職人啦，去點樣去誒排解嗰個問題啦，主要係製作方面啦，同埋佢哋喺設計方面啊，有冇啲咩要求嘅時候啊，咁我哋就係作為嗰個溝通渠梁咧，我哋會誒、呃、疏通多啲咯，唔單純淨係喺設計方面，都同一時間喺呢一個誒、呃、販賣或者製作方面，都會喺呢個方面咧係做好嗰、那個誒、呃、溝通嘅。多謝曬，多謝曬 Yoshiro 先生嘅解答。誒、um, ，好，我哋咧應該現場咧都仲有多一條問題㗎。咁就係啦，誒、uh, ，OK， the, we have one more question from the live audience， and、uh, Adi would like to know what is the difficulty to transform local culture to contemporary brand。うんうんうんうん新しいパッケージとしてブランドとして作り直すっていうのが、うんうんうん、僕たちはやっぱイメージしているのが自分たちもそうですけどちゃんと毎日使えるっていうことです。我哋即係喺呢個方面咧，主要係 focus 喺一啲誒每日都能夠用得到嘅誒產品上面啦。即係當然佢哋喺職人方面。誒佢哋嘅所有嘅所擁有嘅技術係非常之誒傳統同埋好有呢一個誒能力。咁但係當然啦，即係當佢
translate 去一個即係現代嘅角度去睇呢件事，我哋都好希望能夠將呢啲技術誒、呃、傳承落去。咁所以即係例如話，可即係用一個例如嚟講咧，就係、是、話以前嘅人係唔會飲咖啡噶嘛。咁喺現代人嘅角度嚟講嘅話，咁我哋係咪可以將呢一啲產品整成一個可能話咖啡杯咁嘅東西啊？誒、呃，等佢可以同呢一個現代去聯絡翻。即係以前嘅人就可能用一個碗去飲一個即係面豉湯啦，咁但係而家人飲湯嘅話，就當然係可能用啲 soup cup 啊咁嘅嘢。咁我哋可能例如話，將製作嗰一個產品嘅時候，我哋會用翻一個唔同嘅方式去製作翻一啲同現代人合適嘅生活上嘅一啲產品，去將佢融合翻落去嘅。多謝曬，多謝曬，翻譯都多謝曬我哋嘅評審約書希羅生，阿里嘎多謝曬 ，thank you so much。Wonderful and impressive morning section we had. 喺度咧，我哋咧今日咧再一次多谢晒我哋早上环节咁多位国际嘅评审同我哋嘅分享。而下午嘅环节咧，其实我哋亦都邀请到另外几位嘅评审喺产品设计、空间设计同埋唔同嘅领域咧，再同大家深入探讨一下嘅、哦。咁下午嘅分享会咧，将会喺两点正嘅时候就会正式开始噶啦。大家可以用翻同一條網址 Zoom 嘅網址入翻嚟，我哋呢一個分享會就得噶啦。記住唔好錯過兩點鐘準時同大家見面。Thank you so much for joining our morning section of the judges seminar, and we will see you all at 2 p.m. for more sharings on product design, spatial design, and remember just join us using the same Zoom link, and we will all see you at 2 again. See you soon. <laughs>